Good morning, Carlos. Should we wait a couple more moments to see if we can get a few more uh, folks to sign on? Would that be all right? Yes, that is. I think it's better to just wait a bit more. Uh, I've just talked with Manel. Manel is going to open the, the meeting, the other train the course, and then uh, we can. Oh, was two or three minutes. There is one thing that I forgot to send you, uh, Brian. Is something that you, is just uh, as, um, the logistics. Just to put a little bit there, there when you just present the, the work program, uh, just uh, pass it to me just for uh, uh, two minutes or three minutes explanation of what we have in the next cloud for everybody. Okay. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you, Carlos. That sounds like a plan. Yeah. Manel is already with us, I think. Hi, Brian. Good morning. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. Two more minutes and you can start. I think we have already 50 participants. Brian, I think we can. Fantastic. Um, let's get started then. Uh, Mr. Executive Secretary, would you like to open the meeting? Yes, uh, thank you, Brian. Good morning. Uh, bonjour et bonsoir à, à tous. Donc, uh, j'espère que vous vous portez bien, d'où que vous puissiez participer aujourd'hui pour certains Je crois que le réveil n'a pas été trop euh, tôt, puisque c'est à midi. Et donc, je vous souhaite la bienvenue pour cette, euh, cet atelier de formation en ligne sur l'utilisation du système intégré euh, de gestion en ligne. Et je crois que nous sommes tous d'accord pour euh, convenir que c'est un outil très important, euh, qui est un de nos plus grands projets d'ailleurs au niveau du secrétariat et qui va nous permettre d'alléger plus tard, quand tout sera bien huilé, euh, la soumission des données. C'est quelque chose que nous devons apprendre, qui se consolide davantage et qui est très, très important. Je crois que pour tous ceux qui l'ont commencé à se familiariser avec, ils commencent à voir son, son utilité. Et donc, du coup... Nous espérons que cet atelier, encore une fois, fera euh, un pas de plus dans sa consolidation ou dans sa familiarisation, selon comment on le, on le prend. Et vous souhaitez simplement une, une très belle, bonne réunion. Euh, 
et, et voilà, pour et réitérer toute la satisfaction du secrétariat, parce que plus euh, nous allons nous familiariser avec, mieux ça nous facilitera également la tâche. Donc, Brian, merci encore pour euh, coordonner ça, Monsieur le Président, et très bonne réunion à vous. Et en saluant, bien sûr, tout le monde, les interprètes et tous les participants. Merci à vous, Brian. Thank you, Mr. Executive Secretary. Uh, I am very thankful for the Secretariat and all of their work um, on IOMS as well as organizing this meeting uh, in general. And I would support your comments about the importance of IOMS for easing the work of the Secretariat and CPCs for meeting all of the reporting obligations for ICAT. Um, so to begin the meeting, I would just like to quickly review what our goals are here today, and then I will pass the floor to Carlos Palma to review some of the fine scale logistics that will guide us through our, our work for the day. Um, so good morning, um, good evening, good afternoon. My name is Brian Keller. I'm the chair of the Online Reporting Technology Working Group. And today we're here um, for the third IOMS training session. And the work today um, and the training we'll have provided by the Secretariat will focus on a new module that has been underdeveloped by the Secretariat um, staff, which is the Vessel Manager module, a very important tool to help CPCs manage the various vessels um, in ICAT fisheries. The training will be conducted by the Secretariat and we have different modules to display today. Um, and the draft agenda for this meeting was originally circulated in circular 8379. Um, so before we begin, I was um, wondering if any CPCs or participants had any questions about this proposed agenda. And if not, um, we could possibly display that agenda on the screen. Um, but happy to take any questions at this time before we get started. So please feel free to raise your hand uh, if you have any questions. Uh, if not, I will hand over to our friend Carlos Palma. Okay, Carlos, I, I do not see any questions. So I'm wondering uh, if you would like to display the agenda on the screen or if you have any other suggestions for reviewing the logistics for today. Yes, I have a minor edition uh, that uh, we have, was already uploaded, but uh, if you don't mind, I will just first uh, talk about uh, the, a very brief uh, review of the logistics in terms of where the information can be found and, and then we will open the agenda with that minor edits to, to to, to adopt, okay? Perfect. Okay, let's move on. First, this is the, the, the file. You seeing my screen now? Yes, we can see it. Okay, so here this uh, uh, information is just the mining. See if I can, okay. So here is the, if we connect, click this link, this is where we will find the, um, the information uh, on the training course. Just let's just a look. Here we have the workshop, but as this group agreed, this workshop is open and we have, if we go home backwards, we have the training and we have also the previous workshops. And this is the current, the, sex, the third session of uh, the training courses we have on IMS. So we can access previous uh, videos we can access uh, all the information uh, associated to the, all the courses, right? All this in tra inside training. In addition to that, we have also the work that was made uh, by the online working group uh, in 2023, 2023, and also before. So let's focus on the training workshop. Here we have uh, the info. In info, we have the circulars. Then we have the work program. I will just download the work program. And here is the minor uh, review that was made to the, to the change. So 
here is just to work problem review and adoption, and then changing the word doubts by questions and queries that uh, in each each one each part of uh, points three and four of the exercises. So that's the minor uh, edit we have. Everyone agrees. Thank you, Carlos. This uh, certainly seems reasonable. And I'm now putting the uh, link to the training three meeting folder in the chat. So um, if, if folks look in the chat now, you'll be able to click on that link and it will take you and you can review some of the, the files that Carlos just showed. Perfect. So if there are no other changes, so this is uh, basically what we have and any information we have, we are going to put it here, like the presentations and the videos that are going to be recorded. Uh, in addition to that, so all the other things are minor uh, things that we, uh, I just pick up, pick it up the wrong, the wrong dates. So this is only one day, two hours in the morning, three, uh, 30 minutes break, uh, coffee break, and then two hours in the afternoon. If I recall, this is wrong. <laughs> I just get the, picked up the wrong uh, mom, the wrong, uh, but I'll change it, okay? This is what was from the previous uh, online meeting in February. And then this is the all the minor elements that uh, each one needs to know about how to raise the hand, how to work with the uh, Zoom. So anyone can look at it there, look at here and just uh, follow these guidelines for uh, general link it to the Zoom uh, functionalities. And this is basically, I'm not going to spend much more time on this because this can take much time. So I think this I can close this part. Uh, and we, I will defer to you, Brian. I don't know if anyone any has any questions. I'll link it to the logistics. Let me just put... Yeah, thank you, Carlos. Um, does anyone have any questions on the information Carlos just presented regarding the, the various logistics for today? If not, we can begin with uh, the agenda item three, which is the overview of the IOMS as a whole. Okay. Great. The floor is yours, Carlos. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's... let's uh... I have already the, the, the screen. Let's move on to the IMS. So what we, I'm going to show, uh, give a general overview of the IMS in terms of, of uh, what what is, the, uh, what's behind this, what's the main purpose, just be a very short, a very, a very short uh, presentation. This is the, sandbox we have prepared for this meeting, right? So anyone can screw up whatever uh, is necessary. It has uh, additional uh, models, additional information, and now we are going to work on this. So I'll just log in. As you can see, this has more information than what we used to. I'm trying to get rid of the, the floating bar of the <laughs> room. <laughs> well, are you seeing my screen now? Yes, we can see it. Okay, so my colleagues then will we also need to pass this. Uh, my colleagues will pass this uh, new server uh, infrastructure for probably which is a this a replica of what we have in production, but with the models uh, on the vessel management. Right? So we are going to use this for the exercises. My colleagues will pass uh, later on. I don't know if it's possible to do it. Uh, we'll pass this uh, link with this service for anyone to access and make their own work. Remember, this information uh, on the vessels, it's historical information. Uh, so it's uh, does, it has nothing to do with the reality. We have changed. We have used this information for uh, development purposes, and we are not going to... Uh, we use this for any other purpose other than the exercises we're going to do right now. So basically, we have the main dashboard here. Then we have the data requests. And we have all the same functionality here. Uh, on the data requests, we have uh, 
all those ones. So those ones are for 2023, one link it to statistics, the other one is linked to uh, the general, general management and compliance uh, matters. Uh, we have always the possibility to export these and uh, we have also the capability to filter. So this is the link to the data requests. This is by CPC. So when we just issue one, we, have, we know that all the CPCs have received those data requests to provide the information uh, according to the, all the provisions we have in ICAT every year. So if we just choose 2022, we have also the same one. We can export and we can have an idea of what uh, circulars were uh, distributed to all the CPCs. So, so we have many, many functionalities. This is the general uh, view of the requirements. For example, if we want to show the filters, I want to filter something linked to vessels, for example. I can simply apply and see that this is statistical vessel, because I can just put the management by just using this, uh, I can also only get the information linked to the vessels associated. So this is the vessel chart, chart ring, gen, gen uh, 04, and so on. If I want to look at the, all the information linked to Bluefin, I can just check vessel on Bluefin. So you see, it's quite easy to use the search for looking, and then I can export the information. So I can export by resetting filters all, in Excel, for example, I will show requirements of 2020. Well, this is 2018. I pick it up them all. And then here they are, right? This is easily available to everyone. And in the language, this was an extraction in uh, English. I can do the same yeah, if I simply change my language to Spain, for example. Every single change is I want just to filter 2023. And I can then export, oh, sorry. I can export this also in Excel. And see this in Spanish. Okay, so depending on the language you have adopted in our profile, in any moment, if we change, the system will react uh, in order to provide us information the way we normally handle it. So these are the types of functionality you can see here. Then if we want to look at information, for example, looking at this tape, this figure of who has reported and the reporting status of all the CPCs, how they are, for example, uh, we have a completion of, of around, well, like a lot of uh, CPCs right now. We still have some which are working to complete the annual report, Annex 1, uh, Part 1, Annex 1, and Part 2, Section 3. So, if you want to look at details, let me change to English again. I go to the compliance, I see the annual reports, I see the details, this is, this is those buttons, not to everybody see all those buttons. We just, this is only for our, for the administrators, but for example, if we look it to go to the dashboard, we can see details on the provisions of the information on statistics, for example, for 2023, how all of them are in terms of provision. And this is uh, ordered by uh, topic, right? Generic, bluefin, tropical provisions, sword fish, and so on. We have this, how they are, for example, to go down, further down, you see that we have some countries that would, that would have not completed part of the information. So for example, here in the case of Angola, we still have some pending issues and the same is reflected here. So that's why we have Libya and Angola not fully completed, Venezuela and Namibia on some, with some provisions pending. And the same we can just see, this is statistics, we can just see also the compliance uh, and the management uh, associated provisions. So, if you want to look, for example, 
the edit one I'm going just to show, for example, for 2023, if we want to look at stati statistical provision of a CPC, for example, let's pick up one with, in which we have seen and difficulties. For, so we have three pending rows here. Where we're right now helping Angola, trying to figure out how to complete those things. And they have submitted one. We don't have uh, another uh, uh, version. We just have only one submitted with two pending rows, three pending rows to complete. And those pending rows, if I just, I click this button, I just see the completed ones, the not the ones pending. So uh, those is, this is like an useful button to see, to filter what we have completed, we have to, what we have pending and so on. Uh, the annual reports, for example, we just need to complete this for, this is SGN01 is when this was reported because they are not yet this uh, fully completed. This is the complete annual report, including the work part. We have to put the date here. And the same go for the size. We still have to uh, receive from Angola the forms with empty information trying to, because this is mandatory. You see the asterisks here means that the, 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 the provision is mandatory. Even if the information is not collected, the form should be sent. And this is an example for it. If I don't want to do anything, I just use the, uh, the, the uh, our navigator here. This is the breadcrumb that allowed us to go forward whenever we are, we can just. Then we have the users, which is this an important uh, element. I see all the users, but I can just filter. I will just remove and I can just choose a CPC, for example. We had an issue with Panama. Let's show Panama what we have right now. We have asked for, we have received a request to uh, change some things and we did change. But for example, it's very important to know that the administrators uh, are able to manage their own users, it's promoting, demoting the, the rights the adding new ones, the activating, we never delete. We just deactivate by putting the hand date or end of activity because we cannot delete in order to maintain the historical activity of that user in the past. So this is something that is really important to know. Uh, and But anyway, if uh, I'm a user of Panama and uh, I'm a administrator of Panama, I can add a new one by using this button completing this form or I change or changing a user from a regular user by just, if I don't put here save immediately, I can just put this as an administrator user in a CPC, you see? Then we have a button on the right side, see that we want to cancel or we want to save this change. This is promoting a user from regular officer of Panama to administrator of Panama, IOMS administrator. So I will cancel it. But remember, this is, we talk, we're just working on the sandbox. You can test whatever you want. This sandbox is just, was just created for, especially, especially that purpose. So this will not going to reflect the changes in the normal uh, IOMS in production. And this is another aspect which is really important. So you have this, those are many, many elements that we can see here that are normally for administrators uh, that uh, are just sub models or functionalities that are not included on the big models. And we have now one that I'm going to talk later on, which is if I go home, we need to go to compliance data. We have a new one called vessels, right? Uh, I'm not going to touch on that because I'll just leave this to my colleagues. We have been working very hard on this, this, and this. This will disappear, will disappear and this will replace CPO one. And basically that's it. If anyone has another question, link it to this. Uh, this is something that shouldn't uh, really happen. 
this something happened here, it does not no, uh, becomes normal. But anyway, those things can happen in the very, in very in development uh, scenario. So this, this is normally this uh, this change in the dashboard can happen. I'll just we'll just refresh it again, and that's appeared. That's that solves the problem. Anyway, so uh, Brian, I think. I did the small uh, re review of the IMS main status uh, in development status. So please, if you want to. Yes, thank you, you Carlos. I, I do see we have, we have one question for you so far. Um, I'd like to give Cote d'Ivoire the floor, please. Oui, merci. Merci, Carlos, for the presentation. Euh, J'ai vraiment une petite inquiétude. Je ne sais pas si euh, euh, c'est possible de faire une explication sur la procédure pour charger les données, euh, surtout euh, pour le rapport annuel. Parce que j'ai les données sur le fichier Excel, mais je n'arrive pas à le, à le charger dans l'application. Si je peux juste me montrer la procédure pour que je puisse euh, essayer et vous, pour qu'à à la fin de cette formation, je puisse m'assurer que euh, cela est fait. Voilà, merci. OK, sans problème, Julien. OK, I will speak in English, OK? Uh, how easy this is. So this is really important to follow a certain set of rules. So if you go to compliance, let's go to annual report. And let's go to edit head report, right? 2023, I will choose Ivory Coast. You want statistics or management uh, provisions? Julia, an example. Gestion, gestion. Gestion, okay. Uh, and then it will be Cote d'Ivoire. Okay, so for example, this is version one pending, right? If uh, let's suppose uh, we have, uh, you have to complete these things. For example, annual report, you need to put the date, the reporting obligations, you need to put the, all the elements, right? If uh, with this, I will just put you an example here. Let's suppose that you have sent in 2023, uh, September uh, 15, the annual report. I don't know. So I don't know exactly. This is this does this is something that does not uh, is not the um, the real IMS. You have to do it in the other one, right? In the the one in production. This is only for exercises, but I will show you how we can because it, it's, it works the same way. So with this in version pending, I will export this. I will export. So the system is exporting with this with a seal. So which means that you can, uh, because it will appear that I'm exporting it, only myself or this version of the Excel spreadsheet can be imported again after being edited. Let's see. So I will then open the file. You see the date here? Vessel chart ring summary. So uh, this is uh, if you just put here, no. You have to put it here. No charting or entries. Uh, no charting. Okay. So with this, I can change. What we see here is version one, 2023, up, uh, exported by myself. And this is on the back, on the back you have a signature that does not allow that to change this by an older version, because that's why we have this. So imagine that you have one version that you have exported to change. 
what we need to do is to make to guarantee that this will be the latest one that is going to be uploaded to avoid that for any by mistake you upload an older version i will just no charting arrangements i will just put here arrangements and then save it then i close this and i'm going to the online system and I will import the file, which is must be in the uh, downloads, this one, right? You can change the number, we can send some whatever, the name, name of the file doesn't matter. What it matters is that the version, internal version of the Excel spreadsheet is the same. So it's going to be uploaded with that change. Okay, you see, no chartering arrangements. It's now been uh, corrected. We have now two less of complete. This is how it works. It's already there. You don't need to do anything else. Thank did you, Carlos. You... Yeah, did it work I... for you? I don't know. Go on. I Brian. think that was very helpful. I see Kutamor still has their hand, so I'd like to ask them if they have any follow-up questions. No, no, I forgot to raise the hand. Sorry. Okay. No problem, so, thank you. I believe uh, in no. my queue, uh, Tunisia has their hand raised next. Tunisia, you have the floor. Bonjour à tous. Bonjour. Merci, merci beaucoup à, à Carlos pour cette présentation. Et je tiens à noter que ces formations sont, ou cette plateforme qui va faciliter la tâche de secrétariat, mais aussi des correspondances statistiques des CPC. Ceci aussi facilite notre travail dans l'envoi des données. Euh, mes deux questions concernent la première. Est-ce que c'est l'administrateur qui peut envoyer des données ou aussi les autres correspondants statistiques et non pas les statuts de l'administrateur peuvent, peuvent envoyer ces, ces formulaires? Et si possible d'avoir un exemple, comment on peut envoyer les données, par exemple, de la tâche 2, par exemple, ST03, quelque chose comme ça? Et merci. OK. Thank you, Kamal. Uh, well, Marron. If we just filter Maroc, we see that we have eight users. Any regular officer or administrator of Maroc can send information uh, to the IMS or through the IMS, any. Uh, that's why uh, as an administrator of Morocco here, we have uh, Abid Nouredin uh, is the administrator. Uh, and he can manage all the officers of Morocco. He can activate, he can deactivate, he can add new ones. So the, this, this uh, I think, responds to your question, uh, the first question. The second one is right now, the IOMS does not have the model to manage the task one, the, S, the SGO2. Uh, what we, ha we have to, until the new model that we are developing right now, which is co called the form manager, uh, which will embrace the provision through IOMS of all the forms we have right now, we still don't have the way to uh, send through the IOMS these forms. It does not understand those forms. We have to still uh, send the forms, the 60 or 70 forms we have right now, ICAT has right now, we have to send them through email. That's why we have agreed in February to create this form manager model, module, uh, module that will allow us to manage, to inventory, and to trace the status of each one of the forms uh, that each CPC provides to ICANN. We're talking about thousands and thousands of forms received every year. And uh, right now, we don't have that. We are working on two models. One is the vessel manager, which is very complex handles around 20 or 20 something data provisions. 
and also the farm manager that will take care of managing uh, all the provisions through the IMS of the farms. We will explain in February how that will work. We have already now the, the schema, the, the, the way of working of this of the process. Uh, we are just progressing on that, but right now the focus is the vessel manager. And I believe that should be the focus for now. We are going to, we are also developing in parallel the other one, but uh, right now the priority one is the vessel manager. But the other one will solve the problem. Kamal, did I respond the, to both questions? I think you provided an excellent response, Carlos. Thank you. And I would say it's very exciting to see the, the form module uh, advancing because I understand what a massive task that is for the Secretariat each year. I think we have uh, one more hand and then we can likely close out this agenda item and move on to review of the vessel manager module. Um, so Morocco, please, you have the floor. Merci, Brian. Merci, Carlos. Donc, je veux juste signaler que euh, c'était mon collègue de la Tunisie qui a pris la parole avant moi. C'est notre collègue Rafik. Donc, euh, pour ce qui est, euh, j'ai juste euh, une petite question qui concerne l'environnement de test, Sandbox. Donc, j'essaie je, de me connecter, mais je n'arrive pas à, à me connecter. Je ne sais pas si, si destiné uniquement au compte administrateur, parce que personnellement, j'ai un compte CPC officiel. Donc, euh, si vous pouvez me, me dire si je peux me connecter avec dans cet environnement de test ou pas. Merci, Carlos. Merci, Brian. Okay. Yeah, I think my, my colleagues have, have, have already uh, sent uh, or added to, to the chat the connection. The, the roles and the passwords are exactly the same. So uh, if you connect to the, to the regular uh, IOMS in production, you, have, you can connect to the IOMS uh, for testing purpose to this one. Uh, Manuel, have you just upload, or Carlos, have you upload, uh, pass it to the, because I don't have access to the, to the chat. Let's see. Oh, it's there. It's already, Man Manuel has already uploaded the, uh, the connection. So if you just click on that link, you go and you can use your password to access the, the IMS system. <gasps> unless, unless, the, you, unless you have changed the password or the credentials uh, on the latest uh, hours, basically. Because <laughs> if you have changed the password uh, in the... in the... the IMS in production in the latest, the latest six hours or eight hours, maybe... You, you, you have here to use the old one. But I will just leave that to my, my colleague Manuel to see if that is correct, if what I said is correct or not. Manuel, yeah, please. Manuel, can you just talk, please? Okay. You muted, I believe. Todos los usuarios que están en el entorno de producción existen también en el entorno de sandbox. Eh, simplemente, si no recordáis la contraseña, tenéis que hacer clic en el enlace que dice he olvidado la contraseña y volver a establecerla. Si no teníais usuario en el entorno de producción, escribidnos un correo a general.ioms.ecat.in y os crearemos un usuario. Solo es eso. Ok. Perfecto. So I will stop sharing my screen because I have no idea. Thank you, Carlos. Thank you, Manuel. 
Do we have a, a follow-up question uh, from Morocco? Non, euh, Brian, merci beaucoup. Donc, euh, je veux juste euh, signaler que j'ai essayé de d'utiliser encore une fois mon, mon mes identifiants pour l'environnement de production, mais ça n'a pas marché. Enfin, je ne sais pas si c'est si un problème de. Mais euh, même en utilisant les, les identifiants de l'environnement de production, on n'arrive pas à en connecter. Merci. I understand. Thank you. Manuel, could you please uh, put your email address in the chat box and um, perhaps Morocco, you could reach out to Manuel. He's always very helpful to me uh, when I run into similar issues. And also apologies for um, taking the questions out of order. I must have looked at the raised hand queue incorrectly. With that, I think we can close out agenda item three, which would bring us to the core of today's training workshop, the vessel manager module. Um, we will spend most of our remaining time on this module, probably taking our afternoon break sometime in about an hour and 15 minutes, which I believe is two o'clock Madrid time. So um, with that, I would hand the floor back to uh, Carlos and his team to begin our review of this new Vessel Manager module. Please go ahead, Carlos. Thank you. So uh, so we'll do it this together with my colleague. So Jose is going to start to do a, a brief overview of what we have right now uh, developed. Then uh, we together with Manolo and Manuel and myself, we're just going to uh, explain and then pass to the exercises. So please, uh, Jose, go on, your turn. Buenos días a todos. Ahora sí, me había olvidado quitarme el, el silencio. Eh, voy a compartir pantalla antes que, que nada. ¿Veis mi pantalla? Sí. Ok. Bueno, pues eh, voy a hacer lo hago primero. Voy a explicar las funcionalidades que hemos estado desarrollando referentes al, al módulo de barcos. Bueno, esto ya lo ha explicado Carlos, pero bueno, lo voy a recordar por si no ha quedado claro o, o hay alguien por ahí despistado. Eh, este nuevo módulo aún no está disponible en el entorno de producción, es decir, no está en ims.icad.in porque creemos que es un módulo que bueno, puede tener todavía nuevas funcionalidades susceptibles de cambios eh, derivadas de este curso de formación y porque también hemos considerado que la mejor opción es probar eh, lo que ya tenemos desarrollado en un entorno de pruebas que nos permita depurar más fácilmente posibles errores que surjan tras testear eh, este entorno antes de ponerlo en en puesta en producción. Y además también podemos ver así la acogida que tiene esta parte entre los usuarios de, de las distintas CPC, si encaja o si por el contrario tenemos que cambiar ciertos enfoques de la, de la aplicación. Eh, también es importante mencionar que la funcionalidad que está desarrollada hasta el momento se corresponde únicamente con la parte online y por lo tanto el envío offline no está aún desarrollado, estando planificado ya para, para fechas futuras. Y otra cosa importante, que, bueno, que creo que Carlos la mencionó, pero por si acaso la vuelvo a mencionar, eh, es el tema de confidencialidad de los datos, que actualmente para la demostración vamos a mostrar datos de, de las TPCs, pero no son datos reales, ya que se corresponden con con datos que teníamos de barcos de 2021 y, por tanto, eh, 
está, lo, los datos no sirven de prueba, pero no son datos reales porque están desactualizados. Entonces, yendo ya a la materia que, que nos ocupa, para acceder al módulo de barcos, primero es necesario estar registrado en el sistema, como es lógico, conseguir una cuenta de IMS a través del procedimiento que, que ya hemos visto en ocasiones pasadas y que, por lo que Manolo ha, ha comentado hace un momento. Y segundo, tenemos que estar eh, autenticados. Entonces, si eh, me autentico en el sistema... Bueno, tengo que decir que, que voy a hacer la demostración con, con mi usuario, que lo he configurado para que sea un, un usuario con rol CPC. Por ser el rol CPC el que utilizaréis la mayoría de, de vosotros durante este curso. En este caso es un usuario CPC de la Unión Europea. Y bueno, cuando haya terminado de explicar la mayor parte de las secciones, tras explicar la, la sección gestión de barcos, eh, daré paso a a Manolo, que explicará la, la sección de validación de, de barcos. Y, bueno, eh, si dispone de tiempo, hablará también un poco de la funcionalidad de, de, bueno, de barcos, pero enfocado a la perspectiva de, de los usuarios de, de ICAF. Y seguramente pues, complete, complementará algunos detalles que te olvidé durante esta presentación. Y, bueno, una vez que estamos dentro de, del sistema, eh, muchos de vosotros de los que habéis utilizado ya IMS anteriormente os habéis fijado que el tablero eh, principal ha cambiado un poco eh, hemos añadido dos gráficas nuevas muy fáciles de interpretar eh, el primero de ellos representa el total de buques activos, inactivos y inoperativos por cada uno de los pabellones sobre los que te tendría visibilidad el usuario eh, en este caso al ser un usuario de la CPC en Unión Europea Aquí veo pues, los barcos de todos los pabellones de, de la Unión Europea. Eh, si fuese un rol pabellón, pues solo vería aquí eh, los barcos de, de un pabellón. Por ejemplo, si fuese usuario de rol pabellón de Francia, pues solo vería esta entrada aquí. Y bueno, si voy bajando y haciendo scroll, pues vamos viendo los distintos valores que, que tiene cada pabellón. Y bueno, también tenemos otra segunda gráfica que, que muestra el número total de autorizaciones en, en cada lista de autorización para cada uno de los pabellones sobre los que tenga visibilidad el usuario. Igual que antes, si voy haciendo scroll eh, y pongo el ratón en, encima, pues vamos viendo las listas de autorización que tiene cada pabellón por cada tipo de lista. En el caso de que existiese, por ejemplo, para... Dinamar para Dinamarca no, no, no hay lista de autorización y lo mismo pasa con Islanda o Lituania. Y bueno, aquí en estos gráficos, como ha enseñado Carlos, también se puede hacer zoom como en el resto de gráficos si queremos verlos de, de manera más ampliada. Y bueno, una vez que ya hemos visto esto... Eh, ya podemos acceder al módulo de barcos desde el menú lateral a través de datos de cumplimiento y barcos. Y aquí podemos encontrar diferentes aplicativos que hemos desarrollado y que vamos a aplicar a continuación. Eh, primero yo voy a explicar las secciones barcos registrados, autorizaciones de barcos y tableros de barcos, que son las secciones más sencillas. Y por último explicaré la parte de gestión ya que es la más compleja en la que más tiempo dedicaré en esta demostración. Entonces, si empezamos con barcos registrados, pues en esta pantalla pues, podemos ver de forma rápida una vista que, que representa los datos que hemos visto en las gráficas del tablero principal, pero mostrados en forma de tabla. Es decir, que aquí eh, también se muestra el número de barcos activos, inactivos, inoperativos por cada uno de los pabellones. Y igual que expliqué antes, pues le, le, aquí se aplican los principios de visibilidad eh, que, corre, que se correspondan con el rol que tenga el, el usuario. Entonces aquí solo veré los pabellones correspondientes a la Unión Europea. Y aquí cabe destacar que, por ejemplo, en las últimas cuatro columnas pues se, re, se representa el total de, 
de barcos de la, del pabellón el total de activos, inactivos e inoperativos por cada uno de los pabellones. Y eh, en la última fila se muestra el, el total de, de barcos que, que tienen todos los pabellones de la, de la CPC en cuestión. Así vemos que la Unión Europea tiene 33.933 barcos, de los cuales 9.898 están activos, 23.071 activos y 1.004 inoperativos. Y bueno, aquí en esta vista además podemos filtrar por el pabellón que nos interesa. Por ejemplo, o si sea, aquí filtro por Portugal, pues eh, nos quedamos solo con, con el pabellón que nos interesa. Y vemos que Portugal tiene 606 barcos registrados en, en IOMS. Quito el filtro y bueno, aquí no voy a explicar este botón porque ya lo hemos explicado más veces en, en otros cursos de formación, pero a través de este botón podemos exportar los datos en, en el formato que deseemos, seleccionando una de estas opciones. Voy a explicar el siguiente aplicativo que sería eh, autorizaciones de barcos. Esta pantalla, que también es una vista sencilla, eh, representa los datos que, que vimos también en el tablero principal, pero también mostrados en forma de tabla. Eh, aquí podemos ver el número de autorizaciones en cada lista de autorización por cada pabellón. Y en la última columna pues vemos el, el total de, de autorizaciones para ese pabellón. Así vemos que Croacia tiene 268 pabellones, por ejemplo. Y similar a la pantalla anterior, en la última fila, eh, mostramos el número total de, de autorizaciones por cada lista de autorización y para todos los pabellones visibles por el usuario. Es decir, en este caso la Unión Europea tiene 1.522 eh, autorizaciones de lista positiva, 6 de buques de carga y así para, todos los, para todas las listas de autorización hasta llegar al total de, de, de estas para todos los pabellones que son eh, 1.000 o sea, 12.915 autorizaciones. Y como en la pantalla anterior, podemos filtrar por el, por el pabellón que nos interesa, por ejemplo, por Portugal. Y aquí veremos pues, solo las autorizaciones de Portugal. En este caso vemos que tiene 302 autorizaciones. Y puedo resetear el filtro para que vuelva a todos los pabellones. Y igual aquí también podemos exportar los datos. Y bueno, esto sería todo en cuanto a esta parte también. Si entro ahora en la sección tablero, eh, bueno, en esta sección hemos incluido gráficos que resultan interesantes para visualizar los datos de los barcos. Y bueno, en el futuro iremos añadiendo más con la idea de que os aporten información útil a las TPCs. Bueno, una vez dentro vemos que hemos incluido eh, seis gráficos de barras que se interpretan muy, muy fácilmente y están relacionadas con, con las secciones que, que acabo de explicar. Aquí también podemos filtrar por eh, bueno, podemos filtrar porque somos usuarios de CPC y podemos filtrar, por ejemplo, por, por un flag de, de la Unión Europea. Por ejemplo, si vuelvo a filtrar por, por Portugal. pues vemos que aquí se muestran los datos correspondientes a, a Portugal. Si los desmarco de nuevo, vemos de nuevo todos los datos de la, de la CPC. Y bueno, la primera gráfica eh, está relacionada con la sección de barcos registrados que he explicado hace un momento y muestra el número total de barcos activos, inactivos y inoperativos. Y la segunda gráfica pues muestra el número de autorizaciones que el número de, de autorizaciones que tiene cada que tienen los pabellones de, de la Unión Europea y está relacionada con la sección de autorizaciones de barcos que hemos visto anteriormente. Si nos fijamos, pues los valores coinciden con, con los que hemos visto anteriormente en, en las secciones pasadas. 
Y bueno, las secciones de más abajo, en las secciones de más abajo podemos ver el, el número de buques activos, inactivos y no operativos que tienen los pabellones de la UV. Eh, aquí hemos dividido por dos gráficas, por pabellones que no ceden los 900 barcos y por pabellones que sí ceden los 900 barcos, eh, para que las gráficas se puedan visualizar de forma más clara y, y sencilla. Y lo mismo para las autorizaciones. Hemos dividido las gráficas en pabellones que no superan las 900 autorizaciones, que son estos de aquí, y pabellones que sí superan las 900 autorizaciones, que son España, Francia e Italia, para el caso de la Unión Europea. Y bueno, esto sería todo para, para el caso, para esta, para esta sección. Eh, antes de pasar a la sección gestión de barcos, ¿tenéis alguna duda con respecto a estas tres secciones que, que acabo de explicar? O paso a explicar ya la siguiente sección. Thank you, Jose. I see uh, Carlos has his hand, and uh, we can wait for to see if other CPCs have any questions before moving out. But Carlos, please go ahead. Yeah, just informative. Um, uh, Jose, if you go, can you go down a little bit further down just to show the next uh, figures, the next gra uh, graphics? This. Yeah that, uh, yeah, that one, just leave it there, yeah. You see, you have uh, those lists, uh, the blue ones for the case of France, uh, we have a huge amount of bluefin east others, you see? And also uh, for the case of France at the bottom there, that is inactive, I'm, checking, I'm looking the next ones, the next ones, that one. EU France in blue, bluefin others, those belong to a huge amount of small vessels uh, mm -hmm. that uh, the, each ship is a huge amount of vessels that uh, are provided by EU, the small scale vessels, basically. Those that all of them have to be completed. You have the case of Italy and France with those two big uh, elements there. And then you have also on the left side panel for the ones with less than 900 vessels registered. The same for Malta, just to show, just to show there. So, these type of figures allow us to, in a very short, uh, summarized way, how we are in terms of provision for each one of the, of the authorization types. That's it. Thank you. Please uh, remember to keep your microphones muted if you're not speaking on the floor. Thank you. Uh, Jose, I do not see any more hands, so I'd ask you to continue with your presentation. Thank you. Oh, Jose, actually, hold on one second. Apologies, apologies. Um, Cotivora, please <laughs> feel free to take the floor. Merci, Carlos. Et je voudrais savoir, est-ce qu'on peut faire un petit exemple pratique? J'ai un avis, comment est-ce que je déclare, comment est-ce que je remplis la fiche pour déclarer ce, ce petit avis en question? Si on peut faire un petit exemple, je vous dis à la fin, ce serait bien. Merci. Eh, Thank you, ¿Te, te refieres um, a, a un ejercicio para modificar o, introduc o introducir los datos de un barco? Yes, yes. Uh, I will respond to Constance. Yes, Constance. Oui. That, that, that will be the next step that Jose is going to present. How to change the vessel information. So he is going to show us exactly that in the next step. Okay. Continúa entonces, ¿no? Vale. Vale, pues voy a explicar esa parte de que es la que hemos llamado eh, gestión de barcos. 
si entramos, bueno, he de decir que esta sección es más compleja que las anteriores y su propósito es consultar y editar datos de los barcos existentes en, en base de datos. Es decir, en esta sección solo vamos a consultar y modificar. Habrá luego otra sección en la que se puedan añadir barcos, que bueno, esa ya la, la explicará Manolo después de, de mi presentación. Pero en esta solo vamos a poder consultar y modificar campos de identificación, características del barco. También podemos consultar el histórico de un barco, es decir, los diferentes estados por, lo que, por los que ha pasado un barco a través del tiempo a lo largo del tiempo, así como las autorizaciones asignadas a un barco. Y bueno, lógicamente en esta pantalla eh, también prevalecen los criterios de visibilidad de los que hemos hablado antes según el rol de usuario que esté autenticado en, en el sistema. Bueno, nada más entrar vemos una tabla con, con los detalles más relevantes de, de los barcos, que son el, el número de sede de CAT, el número de registro de nacionalidad, el indicativo nacional de radio, eh, el nombre y el tipo del barco, el arte, su longitud en metros, el tonelaje, el estado operativo y la fecha en la que se modificó el barco por última vez. Eh, merece la pena mencionar aquí que las consultas de estos barcos se realizan a través de servicios web que, que van paginando los resultados. Eh, esto es debido porque a la, gran a la gran cantidad de barcos existentes que tenemos en, en base de datos, por lo que no devolvemos todos los barcos de una vez para el, el usuario que esté logado, según el, según el rol que corresponda, sino que vamos recuperando bajo demanda, porque de lo contrario nos encontraríamos muchos problemas de rendimiento en la aplicación si intentamos renderizar todos los barcos de, de una vez. Entonces, si bajamos un poco al pie de página, vemos que efectivamente tenemos eh, muchos registros y cuando accedamos a una determinada página se están haciendo llamadas al servicio web de cablo para recuperar bajo demanda los datos de, de los barcos. Entonces, la primera página se recuperan los primeros 20, estamos ahora en la segunda, pues estamos viendo ahora los segundos 20 y así para todas las páginas hasta el final. Y bueno, cabe destacar que por defecto los usuarios de PC no, no tienen seleccionado ningún pabellón, así que la consulta devolverá todos los barcos de, de las CPC. Cuando seleccionemos un determinado pabellón, pues la consulta filtrará únicamente por los barcos de ese pabellón. Por ejemplo, si filtro aquí de nuevo por Portugal, pues aquí tenemos los barcos correspondientes a, a Portugal, que si os habéis fijado anteriormente, eh, como enseñé en otras secciones, eran 606 los lo que teníamos, pero bueno, aquí lo, lo representamos de otra forma. Y si entramos al detalle, pues vemos que efectivamente estos barcos corresponden a, a Portugal y no a ningún otro pabellón. Está todo bien con, en la consulta. Eh, bueno, si borro de nuevo el filtro, tenemos de nuevo todos los pabellones de, de la Unión Europea. Aquí también podemos filtrar y ordenar por cada uno de los campos que, que aparecen en la tabla. Y para eso tenemos que pulsar, como de costumbre, el botón, el botón mostrar filtros de la barra de herramientas. Y de este modo ya nos aparecen pues, eh, los campos de texto y los botones necesarios para, para filtrar. Entonces, si por ejemplo filtro por un barco con un determinado nombre, eh, por ejemplo filtro por Manolo, creo que había barcos que se llamaban sí, Manolo, pues aquí tenemos las diferentes entradas de barcos que corresponden eh, con el nombre de barco Manolo. Tenemos 11 entradas. Eh, aquí también podemos ordenar por un determinado campo de la tabla. Por ejemplo, puedo ordenar por la fecha de, de modificación de, de actualización de ese barco. Por ejemplo, si ordeno en formato ascendente, pues vemos que aquí efectivamente va ordenando ascendentemente, que tenemos 
entrada de eh, 2008 y se ordenó descendentemente, pues vemos que, que tenemos las entradas más recientes arriba y a medida que vamos bajando los, las actualizaciones serían más antiguas. Eh, aquí también tenemos un filtro genérico, un filtro global, que, bueno, en el que podemos buscar de forma genérica en los campos más relevantes del barco. Si filtro, por ejemplo, por un determinado número de series, eh, por ejemplo, por... Eh, bueno, voy a copiar este para hacer la prueba. Filtro por, el, por este número de series y vemos que efectivamente la, la funcionalidad funciona y eh, está filtrando por este número de serie de, de CAP. Entonces, quito el filtro. Y bueno, vamos a profundizar ahora más en, en los detalles de, de un barco. Eh, hemos visto que, que en la tabla mostramos en primera instancia los eh, datos más relevantes. Pero como también habéis podido observar, podemos expandir cada fila de la tabla para ver el resto de, de los campos del barco, pulsando este botón de aquí. Entonces voy a expandir el detalle del primer barco. Y una vez expandido, vemos que el detalle de, del barco está agrupado en, en los siguientes grupos. En estos de aquí, identificación, características, histórico del barco, eh, listas de autorización y el campo otros. Vamos a ir explicándolos eh, en orden. El grupo de identificación, pues como su propio nombre indica, mostramos aquí los campos de identificador de identificación como el identificador del barco, el IRCS, eh, el tube, el nombre del barco, el, el pabellón o la marca externa, entre otros. Eh, cabe destacar aquí que, que los usuarios que no sean de ICAT no podrán modificar el, el número de serie de, de ICAT. Por eso aquí. Como son usuarios de CPC, pues está desactivado. Y también eh, hay que citar aquí que los campos con asterisco, como son en este caso el nombre del barco, el, el tipo de número de registro o el IRCS, eh, son barcos obligatorios, por lo cual eh, para que las actualizaciones sobre el barco se apliquen correctamente, estos barcos tienen que estos campos, perdón, tienen que estar rellenos. Si os fijáis, eh, bueno, más abajo, eh, en cuanto a los propietarios y operadores, podemos encontrar aquí la información de los mismos, si está seleccionada. Eh, eh, bueno, también puedo, en este caso, borrar el seleccionado actualmente utilizando este botón de aquí. Si pulso, pues nos aparece un, una ventana modal que nos pregunta a confirmación si estamos seguros de, de borrarlo. Si pulsamos sí, vemos que el, el propietario se ha borrado correctamente y también podemos cambiar el, el usuario en caso de que lo hayamos borrado ahora, por ejemplo, o, o queramos cambiarlo ya de base por otro que, que queramos. Entonces, para eso... Eh, tenemos que pulsar sobre el botón cambiar, que es este icono de lápiz. Y una vez pulsado, pues nos aparece una ventana modal con la lista de usuarios propietarios y operadores guardados en la base de datos para esa CPC. Eh, aquí solo aparecen los propietarios y operadores de, de la Unión Europea en este caso. Y bueno, como dice el texto explicativo de aquí, tenemos que seleccionar uno de la lista y para ello, bueno, voy a, a filtrar, por ejemplo, si me sale alguno por Portugal. Sí, me sale. Y bueno, eh, voy a elegir eh, este mismo. Karina Sofía Díaz Botequil. Lo selecciono y cierro el modal. Y vemos que efectivamente se, se ha aplicado el cambio con el nuevo propietario. Eh, como os habréis fijado, cuando editamos un barco, pues vemos que aparecen los botones de guardar o cancelar en, en esta columna, la columna ediciones, que nos servirá más adelante para guardar los, 
para guardar todos los datos relativos al barco o por el contrario cancelarlo si finalmente no estamos convencidos de, de aplicarlo. Siguiendo con el siguiente grupo, pues eh, tenemos el grupo características, que bueno, aquí mostramos detalles del barco, como el tipo del barco, eh, el arte, la longitud, el tipo de longitud eh, el y el estado operacional, entre otros, además de todos estos de aquí. Eh, cito esto porque son los campos obligatorios. Más que nada. Y bueno, aprovechando lo que veo en esta pantalla, pues eh, si paso el ratón por encima de, de los tipos, vemos que nos aparece un texto explicativo en el que nos da más detalle acerca de, los, de las opciones seleccionadas en, en los campos que son selectores. Eh, por ejemplo, en, en este que es un campo selector de, del arte, pues... Es, un camp es, un, es de tipo eh, no aplicable, pero aquí da una pequeña descripción aparte. Y bueno, lo mismo para el tipo de longitud y, y el estado operacional. Y bueno, aquí en este, en este grupo voy a cambiar el tonelaje y le voy a poner que sea 112,8. Seguimos con el, con el siguiente grupo, eh, que sería el grupo histórico. Esto, pues este grupo eh, contiene una tabla con los registros históricos de, del barco y su objetivo es poder consultar el histórico del barco en cuestión o restaurar el barco a una versión anterior. Eh, tiene la misma estructura que la tabla de barcos, que está centrada aquí. Eh, y también podemos expandir su detalle y consultarlo. Pero, como vemos, aquí no podemos editar lo, los campos porque son campos de, solo de, de lectura. Solo podemos ir consultándolo y, y nada más. Porque eh, en este caso, como no somos usuarios eh, de la Secretaría, no tendremos eh, un botón eh, en la tabla no tendríamos aquí la columna acciones con el botón de restaurar, pero este botón sí estará para los usuarios de ICAT que pondrán restaurar el barco eh, a, un, a una versión específica. Y bueno, he olvidado hablar de este campo. Este campo también es diferente con respecto a la estructura normal del, banco, del barco y recoge eh, la fecha del histórico o sea, la fecha en la que se pasó el barco a, al histórico. Eh, seguimos con el siguiente grupo y es el, el grupo de listas de utilización. Y este grupo pues, tiene como objetivo mostrar las listas de autorización detalladas asociadas a, al barco en cuestión. Como indica la leyenda, las filas en rojo pues se corresponden con listas de autorización que, que ya están expiradas, eh, es decir, aquellas en las que la fecha de, de hasta eh, es una fecha ya pasada. Y bueno, por cada lista de autorización, pues la tabla muestra detalles como la fecha de inicio, la fecha de hasta, eh, la, el modo de renovación, eh, la fecha de, de notificación, eh, de inserción o edición de la autorización, el, el tipo de pesca, eh, el área gestionada, entre otros. Y bueno, aquí también podremos modificar algunos datos de, de autorizaciones, incluso crear unas nuevas, algunas nuevas a través de, de este selector. Yo, para hacer la demostración, voy a modificar, por ejemplo, la lista de buques de carga y. Eh, voy a establecer el área gestionada a eh, el mar Adriático. Y vale, si, siguiendo con, con el último grupo, que es el grupo Otros, que eh, bueno, es un, una pestaña pues, destinada a agrupar datos que no tengan cabida en ninguno de los grupos anteriores. Y de momento solo tenemos las anotaciones realizadas sobre el propio barco y la información de la persona que modificó el barco por última vez y la, y la fecha de actualización. 
Eh, bueno, esto sería lo que, lo que es la explicación del detalle de un barco. Ahora, si queremos guardar los cambios que hemos realizado sobre el barco, de el, el propietario, el tonelaje y las listas de autorización, pues eh, podemos pulsar el botón guardar de, de este barco y una vez pulsado nos aparecerá una ventana modal que nos preguntará si estamos seguros de, de aplicar los cambios. Eh, si pulsamos aceptar, nos indica que todo ha ido correctamente. Eh, los cambios han pasado correctamente a la tabla de validación. Es decir, los cambios no se aplican directamente sobre esta tabla central de barcos sino que pasan a la tabla de validación de barcos donde serán supervisados por la Secretaría antes de aplicarlo sobre la central y donde incluso eh, cualquier usuario puede seguir editando los eh, campos que, que les resulten oportunos. Mi compañero Manolo os explicará ahora un poco más los detalles de, de esa sección. Y bueno, ya por último, pero no menos importante, si intentamos modificar en la tabla central un barco que ya está en la tabla de validación, el sistema nos devolverá un error indicando que tenemos registros duplicados que ya existen en la tabla de, de validación. Por ejemplo, para este barco, si intento modificar, por ejemplo, el estado operativo y lo pongo a destruido e intento guardar, pues el sistema no, nos informa de que eh, hay una detección de duplicados en la tabla de validación y por lo tanto no se ha podido aplicar el, el cambio y pasarlo a la tabla de validación. Si, bueno, si entro rápidamente a la tabla de validación, vemos que eh, aquí está el cambio que, que he aplicado anteriormente. Aquí cambié el operador, aquí está el cambio del tonelaje y aquí está el cambio del de, de área gestionada. Pero bueno, esto ya como digo, os lo explicará Manolo ahora con, con más detalle. Y bueno, esto sería todo lo que os tenía preparado para contar sobre, sobre el módulo de barcos. Si tenéis alguna pregunta sobre todo esto o, o si por el contrario, pues doy paso a a mi compañero Manolo. Jenny, please go ahead. Hi, good morning, buddy. Uh, sorry, maybe I didn't hear correctly because I'm not concentrating fully, but did you say that this would then go to the Secretariat for validation? And if so, how are we going to know whether this is right or it's not right? Claro, cuando se hace un, una modificación en la tabla central, que sería esta sección de aquí, gestión de barcos, el cambio que se haga sobre el detalle de un barco no se aplica directamente a la central sino que ese cambio se pasa a la tabla de validación, que es esta tabla de aquí. Y en la tabla de validación la Secretaría revisará dicho cambio y eh, si está de acuerdo con, con ese cambio, eh, validará, lo validará y se pasará a la tabla central. Aquí en este caso, bueno como no soy un usuario de la Secretaría, no me aparece el botón de validar. Que, claro, solo tiene sentido para, para, ese, para ese rol. Pero en ese caso, la Secretaría debería revisar los, los cambios que ha hecho la CPC y si está de acuerdo con esos cambios, eh, pulsar el botón, un botón que salga por aquí con un ticket verde para validarlos. O también existe este botón de aquí para rechazar los cambios y por el contrario, la Secretaría o incluso la propia CPC que ha hecho los cambios eh, no está de acuerdo con, con los cambios, los puede rechazar.
Uh, if I may, um, I think perhaps the word validation is a little bit um, confusing because uh, I guess what the Secretariat would be looking at is whether or not the submission is in accordance with the ICAT rules because the Secretariat cannot possibly know whether that vessel is that length or whether it's not that length. That can only be known by the CPC. So therefore, we would validate anything unless there was some alert to the that we would think that ah, this is not in accordance with ICAT rules. Is that correct? And I, Brian, just this yeah. is the response, yeah. response oh, to, to, to Jen. Carlos yeah. no puede echar una mano aquí. Sí, sí, okay. Yeah, this is this is the the first. Uh, view of the vessel manager, right? We don't know exactly how to, uh, if no, we are going here. to validate. You can't? You can now, right, Jenny? Now I can. Okay, yeah, this is the first version. So we have many words that will not match exactly what we mean. So for example, the validation could be kind of acceptance of the change uh, for the secretary. We don't know even if the secretary will do that or this will become automatic. That's what we do right now in which when we receive a CPO1 form, we just then pass it uh, to a preliminary database that checks against what we have now to apply the changes. If, uh, if there are any issues, we can then, instead of just applying those changes, try to contact the CPC in order to see if this correct, does this match our needs? So it's, it's this type of validation is something that we may discuss this uh, about the proceedings uh, in February. That's the way I... I Right now, we had to do something uh, based on uh, what we consider the best option is to at least before just make persistent the change of a vessel is pass it to uh, the similar process that we have right now. So uh, being revised by the secretary, if the group considers this is necessary, if the group considers it's not necessary, so we just put the responsibility on the uh, officer of the CPC. That's another another thing you can decide upon. But right now, this is the way we consider that was the best uh, first version to put on the table to uh, all the users, come up with some feedback, and that's the best way. So for example, I pick it up your uh, note, and I would go, maybe we can, instead of validation, we can consider acceptance through the, by the secretary or uh, acceptance according to the procedures, according to the, the uh, current ICAT uh, regulation or something like that. Uh, but it's a kind of a screening process that allowed us to, before making persistent the change, to verify uh, by us the information. But this will change for sure in the future, according to the procedures that are going to decide on February. Well, is the, Jenny, is that more or less clear? Yes, thank you. Perfect. So, and uh, that's what my colleague Jose wants to explain. But anyway. Uh, I will pass. I will defer to to you, Brian, and and uh, Jose again. Thank you, Carlos, and thank you, Jenny, for sparking that conversation. I think that was a, a helpful clarification. I see in uh, the participants list that EU has requested the floor. EU, please go ahead. Yes, hello. This is Oliver Schulz from the EU. I have a question regarding the list of owners that we have seen before. Um, so let's say you delete an owner, you want to edit an owner, the system proposes a whole list. Um, uh, what is the source of this list? So are these all the owners that were ever registered in the system in the past? And the question two is, um, what about new owners that were never uh, listed in the past? How do they get in the system? Awesome. You can respond to that one. Sí, efectivamente, cuando intentas cambiar un operador, pues eh, la lista de operadores que, que te devuelve el sistema son operadores de, de tu CPC, de la CPC correspondiente. Y esa es una buena pregunta. La segunda, en cuanto a operadores que, que no están en no están dados de alta, por ejemplo, tú quieres entrar aquí y no encuentras el operador. Pues eh, en ese caso eh, todavía no hemos eh, implementado o no tenemos preparada la funcionalidad para, para dicho caso. En ese caso pues tendría, tendría que, 
la CPC tendría que contactar con nosotros y nosotros añadir el, el propietario. Yeah. Or, or uh, optionally, uh, we, and this is something that you can develop, you just allow the possibility of the CPC to uh, include a new owner or a new operator. So that is quite straightforward. It takes some time to develop the, proce the process, right. okay. the functionality, but we don't need to request We can't go directly because uh, as we do now, so we just uh, have the uh, current, the existing ones in order to avoid duplications. Uh, we just propose, this is what we have for this CPC, uh, for all the vessels registered by this CPC. So choose one or add a new one. That's the best way. That the new one will be uh, added soon. That functionality will be added very soon. Thank you, Carlos. E, uh, do you have a follow-up question? No, that's fine. That's uh, clear. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Yes, don't, don't move that way. I just want to show one thing uh, that is really important that we are working on. Uh, it's the duplication of owners and operators. Uh, right now, there is a huge duplication uh, because the way it was uh, managed in the past is allowed uh, that duplication. Uh, and uh, right now we have the possibility to uh, eliminate that redundancy. This is something that we are going to work in the future. And uh, the idea is to, well, for example, you see in the 925 and 926, Anglade Thierry Jean, for example, if you just uh, you can filter, uh, just show filter, it puts, The, the yeah, you can put Thierry Jean in the filter to get to cap to capture 925 right, and 926. Right. Exactly, I'm glad okay. if you filter that, we will see that we have a huge. Okay, we'll see that we have those two which are the same. The only difference is that one has the zip code, the other one does not have the zip code. This is something that has to do with uh, well, an incomplete uh, provision in, in the past, which is, has now been. So this type of duplications are going to clean up the database, the current database, and come up with a uh, revised version for when we uh, decide to put in production this new vessel manager. So this type of things will be solved, and we will try to clean up that duplication as much as we can. Thank you. Just, just. A small that small clarification. Thank you, Carlos. Um, you would ask uh, if you could please lower your hand unless you'd like to take the floor again. I'm happy to recognize you. Um, next, I believe uh, Senegal. Please, you have the floor. Senegal, if you're speaking, I, we can't hear you. I believe you're still muted. We can hear you. Thank you. Oui, merci. Bonjour. Uh, merci donc pour cette présentation, notamment du uh, module gestion des navires. Uh, J'avais une question. C'était pour. Uh, En fait, quel type d'utilisateur peut opérer ces modifications-là sur la liste des... Yeah, I can respond to that one, Brian. M'entendez? Yes. Can, can I? Brian, can I respond, answer to that question? Yes, Carlos, please. Yeah, thank you. Uh, let's see if I understood correctly. The question was if uh, what type of users of that CPC can change the vessel uh, record information, right? If oui, so, bien ça. okay. If so, any registered user, be uh, administrator 
or an officer of that particular CPC. Anyone can change it. Uh, in the future, if the, the online reporting group, working group decides to fine tune those uh, uh, rules, those uh, types of, of, of uh, capacity that the user can do, so the rights, the user rights, uh, we can just do that in the future. But right now, any user of a given CPC, any user type can change their own data. That's why we have to put this in a, a kind of a temporary update if you want to change in order to be verified by the officer, by the administrator of that CPC or, or by, by the secretary. Whatever we choose will be, uh, the system is going, to, is going to be designed that way. Merci, c'est très clair. Merci. Thank you. C'est parfait, merci. Okay. Thank you, Carlos, for helping with that uh, question. I believe we can continue um, now with the demonstration. I see, I believe Manello is going to provide a presentation to carry on what Jose has shared with us. Is that correct, Carlos? Correct, yes. Wonderful. Okay, I... in that case, please continue with the presentation. Okay, Jose. So you pass you pass it to to Manuel no? already. Hola. Antes de empezar, eh, quiero hacer un par de aclaraciones sobre lo que hemos estado hablando recientemente. Eh, los eh, dueños, los propietarios y los operadores de los barcos actualmente no se pueden generar nuevos. Eh, esto se, se hará en el futuro y se permitirá también la edición de, los, de estas personas. Actualmente hay un, la tabla contiene todos los que están registrados en cualquier barco, eso incluye toda la información histórica de los barcos. Entonces, eh, cuando hay un mínimo cambio en un propietario, por ejemplo, hay una corrección en la dirección o, como hemos visto antes, han añadido un código postal, eso queda registrado en el histórico. Entonces, el, el barco histórico contiene el propietario incorrecto y el barco nuevo contiene el propietario nuevo. Y corregido. Entonces se guardan los dos. Esto es así por trazabilidad. Eh, de todos modos, todo también quiero recordar que lo que estamos mostrando hoy es una versión en desarrollo, que nada es definitivo y que todo está sujeto a cambios en el futuro. Podría cambiar todo esto en cualquier momento. Eso también incluye eh, nombres o denominaciones que hemos dado a algunas páginas, como la página de validación. Eh, que, que tendremos que cambiar para que estemos todos de acuerdo. En cuanto a los roles en los que se permite que se modifiquen barcos, actualmente es cualquier usuario. Cualquier usuario puede modificar y añadir los barcos, pero siempre dentro de su rango de, de visión. O sea, un usuario de CPC puede cambiar un barco de su CPC. Un usuario de pabellón puede cambiar un barco de su pabellón. Y los usuarios de la secretaría podemos cambiarlo todo. Bueno, una vez aclarado esto, voy a seguir con, con la presentación. Para empezar, voy a entrar con mi usuario. Y al igual que José, mi usuario... pertenece a la Unión Europea y al pabellón España. Esta es la página que queda por ver. Mal llamada validaciones de barcos. Aquí tenemos los barcos que están pendientes de validación para mi CPC, para la Unión Europea. Este es el barco 
que ha añadido José hace un rato y estos dos barcos han sido añadidos por otras personas de la Unión Europea que están haciendo pruebas en este momento. Eh, para añadir un nuevo barco, un barco totalmente nuevo, tenemos el botón de añadir. Nos sale esta ventana con los campos de identificación. Yo voy a añadir un barco nuevo. Un número de registro nacional, un número de registro internacional, de tipo IMO. Vamos a ponerle el indicativo internacional de radio. Todo son datos inventados. TVI. Como marca externa, el barco tiene pintado IK999 y su nombre es... Lo voy a añadir a la bandera de la Unión Europea sin especificar. Elegimos un propietario de la lista. Yo voy a buscar a una persona en concreto. Esta persona de aquí. Seleccionamos, cerramos y ya se añaden sus datos. Lo mismo voy a hacer con el operador. Seleccionamos, cerramos y ya tenemos asignados sus datos. Ahora vamos a introducir las características del barco. Va a ser un barco multipropósito de arte desconocido, de 200 metros, un barco grande, 3.000 toneladas brutas y una capacidad de 2.000 metros cúbicos. Es un barco nuevecito, de este año, fabricado en Portugal, más concretamente en Lisboa, profundidad 20 metros, vamos a ponerle un motor pequeñito de 20.000 caballos. El sistema OMS y por supuesto el estado operativo. Pasamos a la pestaña de listas de autorización, vamos a añadirle también una autorización, una autorización de carguero. que empezará el 1 de enero de este año y terminará el 31 de diciembre de este año. Renovación automática, uso comercial para el Atlántico. Una vez rellenados todos los datos, importantes, recordar que los que tienen asterisco son obligatorios, pulsamos el botón guardar y ya tenemos nuestro barco listo para la revisión por parte de la Secretaría. Tenemos todos los datos, los cuales en esta pantalla se pueden editar sin ningún problema. Por ejemplo, si nos hemos equivocado en el nombre, ya podemos editar en cualquier momento y sin ningún tipo de problema. Al lado de cada barco me encuentro dos botones. El rojo es para rechazar el barco. El barco que quiera rechazar es un barco que pues, me he equivocado al ponerlo o quiero rehacerlo del todo o ya no me interesa que sea añadido al registro, en este caso se borra de esta tabla de validación o pendiente de revisión o el nombre que finalmente tenga 
esta página. Sin embargo, si estoy de acuerdo con estos cambios y quiero que la Secretaría eh, los incorpore al registro central y se haya un barco de pleno derecho, tengo el botón de la campanita que lo que hace es notificar cambios a la Secretaría. Esto envía un correo electrónico a las personas encargadas de este trabajo para que revisen el barco y lo incorporen. Asimismo, si lo que no queremos es eh, añadir un barco nuevo, sino modificar, como ha hecho José, un barco eh, que ya existe, pues sería de la misma manera que ha hecho José. No lo voy a repetir, pero es tan sencillo como entrar en el barco que se desea cambiar, cambiar los datos y pulsar el botón de guardar que aparecerá. Entonces voy a ver, voy a poner la vista de un usuario de la secretaría para que veamos lo que haría la secretaría para incorporarlo. Esta es la vista de la secretaría, es la misma que os ha enseñado a Carlos Palma en su, en su, primer, en su primera presentación. Entramos en cumplimiento, barcos. Aquí tenemos los barcos pendientes de validación. Están los barcos de la Unión Europea, que son el que yo acabo de, de introducir, el que ha introducido José y los barcos que ha introducido, aquí hay un barco que ha introducido uno de los asistentes de Panamá, y aquí hay un barco introducido por una persona de la Unión Europea. Entonces el usuario de la Secretaría revisaría que todos los campos están correctos, si hubiera algún fallo avisaría a la persona que introdujo el barco, para que hiciera los cambios oportunos, o bien los podría hacer, los podría hacer la misma persona de la Secretaría, sin ningún problema tampoco. Y en el momento que el barco esté correcto, pulsaría este botón, que acepta los cambios, y el barco ya no está aquí, el barco ha pasado al registro central. Podemos buscar por el nombre y ahí lo tenemos. El barco ha sido asignado un número nuevo de serie de ICAT que también está, estamos pendientes de eh, poner bien la numeración porque creo que hay que añadir algún cero. Y, y esa es toda la operativa que quedaba pendiente de explicar. Espero que, que quede más o menos claro y si hay alguna pregunta, pues es el momento. ¿Alguna pregunta? Carlos. Sí, no es una pregunta, es un complemento. Eh, muchas gracias, Manuel. No sé. Brian, ¿puedo, no? ¿Quién hay? Sí, yes, por supuesto, Carlos. Yeah, it's just a, a small component. Uh, as you saw right now, uh, we don't have the, if you just leave it there, Manolo, if you go to just look at the old vessel, uh, I, got, I got number, go to the, uh, yes, here. Here we don't have the, I got serial number here, that one. That's the I got serial number. And which is does not match the ones we have now, right? We, we, this vessel for you should have been uh, 80 EU or 80 e, I think the vessel was French vessel. They have been to capture the flag inside the number. Uh, we are going to change in the, in the version of the vessel manage, manager the, uh, the current ICAT serial number uh, given by ICAT uh, since 2004. 14, if I recall correctly, up to now, those will be former numbers. 
uh, we are going right now to start with one number that we have stored internally is going to uh, have this association with the nationality of the vessel removed from them. So it will become truly a unique number. That number will be forever. And right now we are going not going to use any vessel, any vessel number in the future. So we need to change slightly the specifications here. This, if I recall correctly, it was agreed uh, and Jenny can help me on that uh, like four or five years ago uh, and accepted by the commission. We just need to put in place that we will maintain the former number, but we will issue new numbers, uh, which is basically right now make visible the current number that we have uh, always had with us since the beginning of the, the creation of the, uh, of the current database on the vessel map, on the vessel record of ICAP. So that's something that those specifications need to be addressed. But I believe right now is quite straightforward. So we don't need to change uh, much more. But I believe if Jenny confirms with the, the, this, uh, we can uh, advance slightly. But I, yes, Jenny, Carlos, it looks like uh, Jenny did confirm in the chat that you are correct. Yeah, of course. Right. Perfect. Thanks, Jenny. So, and now I leave that questions to the to the group. Thank you, Carlos, and thank you for your presentation, Manuel. Uh, do we have any questions? Please feel free. Um, U.S. Please go ahead. Yes, hello everyone. Um, many thanks for this presentation. Um, I can see that a lot of work has gone into this um, this section of the IOMS. Um, and I know that's not the right terminology, but it's early here. Um, I had a few um, concerns, I guess, with some of the the language that's used in here, and I think it could be pretty minor changes. But it's not, frankly, it's not really clear to me how how difficult it might be given where we are in the development. But I noted that, um, you know, there are sections referring to the number of vessels registered, management of vessels. And I, I think that um, some of those terms can get confusing because it's up to, you know, CPCs to register and license vessels um, and and to manage their vessels. But of course, it's um, I, ICAT is, is working on managing the, the database of this information. So I wanted to um, maybe suggest some, some changes there instead of the number of vessels registered. I think we could easily, you know, replace, swap uh, the word listed with registered. Um, and, for, and for references to management of vessels, I think, you know, maybe management of vessel list or management of vessel details, things like that would be helpful. Um, I, I think it's, you know, it seems like kind of a minor point, but we often um, struggle in conversations, I think, with the difference between listing vessels, registering vessels, licensing vessels. I think it can get quite confusing. And so I wanted to, to make that suggestion. Again, many thanks for this presentation. I can, I can see how this will uh, ease our, our workload into the future. Thanks. Thank you, U.S., and thank you for providing um, some recommendations as well. I see um, in the chat, Jenny mentioned we could use the term validation, or ex excuse me, use the term acceptance in, as opposed to validation. And maybe a along those same lines, we could also use the term listed instead of registered and also um, management of vessel lists as opposed to managed management of the vessels in particular. I think uh, those are useful suggestions and we can uh, work with Carlos and the rest of the secretary to try to incorporate them uh, as appropriate throughout the developmental process. Do we have any other questions on this section and this presentation from Manuel? Carlos, please go ahead. Thanks, Brian, and thanks, Melanie, and also thanks, Jenny. Yes, it's this type of the terminology that they're going to adopt. Uh, this basically, uh, the ones we have chosen to create this first version, as Manuel said, is just based on what we have right now. But uh, this is the type of uh, um, 
input that we need from everybody. Maybe we need to create a kind of uh, list of term, 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 well, terms to not to be used only on the vessel manager, but also on the other uh, elements that we need to simplify the process because this is really important. This is what we really, really need, need to uh, uh, reflect exactly what we want we want on the on the IMS system. So maybe we should come up with a kind of uh, we come starting with these examples that now I just gave us, starting to use those examples, trying to refine these terms that we use on the vessel and the IMS in general, not only on the vessel manager, but this is the type of feedback we need from everybody on these training courses, during the uh, online reporting, working group meetings, intersessionally uh, in order to advance that and the, this is not a big change we just changing some elements uh, but uh, those are very important to simplify even for the help system that will just have those elements in there uh, much well and much better expressed to save and to help and to guide anyone thank you Thank you, Carlos, for being receptive and also asking uh, for further feedback. Is it's very helpful to hear from the CPCs that are uh, using the IOMS. I believe now that um, concludes the demonstration portion of the online completion for a agenda item. Um, so, Carlos, looking next, we have some time set aside for exercises, and I think we've already started looking. Um, at how the vessel manager module works and performing some of those exercises. But I'm wondering if you'd like to maybe provide an introduction to some of those exercises um, for the next 10 minutes or so, and then perhaps we can have our afternoon break before continuing with that agenda item. Thank you, Brian. Yes, I, I believe uh, we can, with these five minutes we have uh, with us, we can, uh, we may invite the users uh, now registered to access the IMS and trying to look at the vessel manager to trying to get used to the, to that new to this new functionality that uh, Jose and Manuel have presented, and uh, maybe we just those five minutes just give us time for that, and then later on after the break we can start really doing exercises on those cases, and just bear in mind that. This is a uh, multi-user. It's uh, everybody can change uh, the, their own information, and uh, for example, all those changes will be uh, seen then at the end uh, uh, by by changing only one element of a vessel. It will be seen at the end on the uh, model that Manuel shows us, showing the, the uh, changes needed to be. Uh, scrutinized or verified or validated, whatever you use later on, or accepted by uh, the secretariat or by the administrator of the CPC. So uh, all those will be appear there. So it's important that we just practice, just enter to see, uh, and feel free to change whatever you want, not only on the vessel manager, but all, only on the other uh, models that we have. And uh, uh, Avoiding to change the password right now. If you have access, you don't need to change. But uh, otherwise, we are going to receive a lot of <laughs> emails asking for changing. But anyway, I think that's a good starting point. If anyone has questions, just ask while trying to connect. Thank you, Carlos. So your recommendation now would be for folks to sign in to IOMS so that they're prepared to begin walking through exercises after the break. Is that right? Correct. Yes, okay, great. And that's correct. Manuel, could you please perhaps share your screen and remind the participants how they can log into the system? And Carlos, should we do this in the sandbox or in the... in the... In the sandbox. Everything is on the sandbox. Okay. So, so maybe we I... We, we don't have the vessel manager in the 
the server in production. Okay. In, okay, so this is just for testing. That's why anyone can change whatever it's necessary for uh, in any of the models. So. Perfect. But Manuel, just, just please share with us. Thank you, Manuel. And Manuel, may I also bother you or, um, to put the link to the sandbox in the chat? Actually, I can do that. It's already there. Yes, it's already there. So now um, you'll see the link to the sandbox, I, I suppose, twice. Um, so just for these next few minutes, we'll ask participants to log in to the sandbox um, using that link and Manuel will you know, show you how to do it now, entering your username and your password. As noted, it's the same as what you would use for the normal IOMS um, website. And then once you're in the sandbox, you'll see at the top left of the screen, it says testing to let you know when you're in the right place. Um, and this is where when we, we return from our afternoon break, we can spend some time together um, working through some demonstrations and exercises. I will note um, we've had some good exchange thus far and we've been answering questions as we go. So we will probably be able to save some time um, on these agenda items. We only will have about an hour and a half left when we return from our break. So I suspect we'll spend about 30 minutes perhaps on these exercises, maybe from 8.30 where I am to 9 o'clock or 2.30 to uh, 3 p.m., I believe, Madrid time. Yeah. Great. I think, okay, I, th I, th I think it's a good, a good, a good uh, proposal, Brian. If you can save some time, we'll have time for other things later. Perfect. Okay, um, I think we can go ahead and take our half hour break, but I, I see, um, did Senegal, did you raise your hand? Yes, you can uh, please take the floor. Go ahead. No, 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 no chair. It's just a, a, a misfunction. Oh, no problem. Good to see you. Thank you. Uh, Carlos, please go ahead. I had raised my hands from the previous one, sorry. No problem, no problem at all. I wanted to. Or... Perfect, thank you. Um, thank you all for a productive morning session. We can now break for 30 minutes. So returning um, mid hour, so uh, 8.30 for me, and I believe 2.30 for the Secretariat, those in Madrid. Um, so we'll see you all in 30 minutes. Okay.
Hello, everyone. We can start back up in one minute. See you soon. Let us begin our afternoon session. I think we can now all turn to the sandbox to begin the demonstration. Um, as I noted before our break, I think we will conclude the demonstration and exercise portion of our agenda, which is agenda item 4A, in about 30 minutes. Um, so we have enough time for the rest of our agenda. So I would uh, now turn the floor over to Carlos and the rest of the secretariat team to begin walking us through the sandbox exercise. Please go ahead, Carlos. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. I have just a few questions on the on the chat directly. Please just send the, the questions to the generic chat to everybody to in order to help. One is question a question from uh, uh, Giovanna from Venezuela. Uh, she wants to uh, access uh, the sandbox and she can't. So my colleague, well, I'll just send an email, uh, Giovanna, please to to my co to general uh, IMS info, and we'll just help you on that. Uh, my colleague Manuel or Jose or Dashiell will help you on registering into the system. So let's start. Let's start by by the first exercise is. I'm going to share my screen, which is uh, okay. So we here we can we can access and we can see who is doing uh, changes to the system. Right now, we have uh, four from uh, Croatia, one from Panama. An additional one from a carrier vessel or for, uh, I think it's Panama, new one, and an edit to the one of the vessels also from Panama. So please try to connect. The first exercise will be to access the vessel management. Choose your flag. Uh, if you're a user of a CPC, you just appear. Uh, directly the flag, I'll just put Venezuela here, just to see what we have and show the filters and then change one vessel. For example, this vessel will change the length of roll, one of the characteristics uh, from 65, 43 meters but to 64, uh, 65 meters point uh, eight, right? This, if we do change here, save, this vessel from Venezuela will appear here in the vessel cards, you see. Uh, it is, should have been here. It's this one, right? If we look at the characteristics, this is the number that has changed. And as soon as any user changes a vessel, we will see here the number of users who have 
uh, made those changes, for example. So please try, and if any anyone has questions, uh, this is the first exercise, trying to edit uh, one characteristic, then we'll move on to another exercise, which will be uh, change an authorization list of a given vessel. So remember, this are, is information that is, uh, is going to be replaced by valid information later on, but right now it just, we can change whatever we need. It will not affect any of the information we have right now on the vessel manager system in ICAP. Thank you, Carlos. Uh, I see um, Guatemala has uh, raised their hand. I believe they have a question. Please go ahead, Guatemala. Gracias. Buenos días. Solo yo me metí al enlace de Sandbox que mandaron en el chat y la interfaz que me aparece a mí no es igual a la que están viendo en a la que estamos viendo en pantalla. A mí solo me aparece nada más Guatemala y la forma en la que están distribuidos los caracteres eh, en, en mi enlace de Sandbox es diferente a este. Entonces no sé si, si me pueden enviar un nuevo link o nosotros no tenemos acceso a lo mismo que ustedes tienen acceso. Gracias. Sí, uh, gracias, Guatemala. Ya. Yeah. Uh, esto es uh, uh, para explicar un poquito uh, cómo funciona el IOMS en funciona eh, con perspectivas, significa que él sabe de antemano qué es lo que cada usuario puede hacer. Entonces, en eh, función de eso, muestra los módulos y las funcionalidades que solo ese usuario puede hacer. ¿Vale? Si es un administrador de IOMS, como yo, Manuel, bueno, todo el team de desarrollo de IOMS, o Manuel o José, eh, él mostrará toda la funcionalidad. Si es una, un, una persona en la secretaría, pues mostrará todo, excepto la parte asociada al desarrollo. Si eres un usuario de un CPC, solamente mostrará información de su CPC para edición de datos, pero a, a nivel de dashboard puede ver casi todo. Entonces, si tú eh, nos puedes, muestras tu eh, ecran, ya verás que te puedo ayudar, voy a, voy a dejar de compartir y nos vamos a orientar para mostrar un poquito uh, Carlos, ¿no? Carlos Eduardo. Vale. Si compartes su pantalla, te vamos a orientar un poquito a verlo. Porque si puedes acceder a eso es porque está bien. Si entras en el sistema. ¿Puedes compartir la pantalla con nosotros? Eso es. Vale. Entonces vamos al inicio. Inicio. Tienes ahí el navegador arriba. Puedes pinchar ahí. Eso es, al inicio. Entonces, ahora te, vete a datos de cumplimiento. Compliance data, sí. Y aparecen esos dos. Está bien. Los demás botones son nuestros, ¿vale? Eh, son un poquito como este es un eh, sistema, sabe que tú, es, si pinchas a la derecha, if you just, sorry, let me just maintain in English. If, if you click on the right, your profile there on the top right, uh, where is shown Carlos Eduardo Martinez, on the right side, top right, uh, near the button, on the top right, where it says, exact. no, 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 just Carlos Eduardo, just click in there. There. Perfil de Carlos Eduardo Martin, click it. ¿Ves? Está ahí, estás como usuario, administrador de una CPC. Puedes hacer más que un usuario normal, pero solo de tu CPC de Guatemala, ¿vale? Pues está bien. Entonces, vamos otra vez al inicio y vamos a barcos. Datos de cumplimiento. Gestión de barcos. Y ahora el pabellón es Guatemala, ¿vale? Entonces, eh, ahora... Eh, se, Cierra un poquito eso. Baja, eh, claro. Tú puedes ver aquí barco por barco. Bájate un poquito más. Solamente hay un barco en Venezuela. Ah, ya sé por qué. Es porque, eh, estás viendo los detalles ya de los barcos. Pínchate un barco cualquiera. El botoncito que tiene... Eh, no, no, ahí arriba. Sube, por ejemplo. Pincha, sube hacia arriba. Aquí. ¿Estás viendo? 
on the top left side for that bar just beginning, just click the right arrow just before the number of I said it, they cut. No. Debajo de pavilion. Debajo de pavilion. Pe perdón, por algún motivo no, no, no tengo con audio. Entonces no logro escuchar ahí lo que donde me dice eso, la indicación Back. que me das. Debajo de pavilion. Debajo de pavilion, donde está escrito pavilion. Tienes una Z hacia la derecha, ¿no? Un right arrow. Solamente puedes elegir Guatemala. Pincha, pincha Guatemala. Eso es. Ya está. Entonces, ahora tienes justo por debajo un botón que es una Z hacia la derecha, que son los detalles del barco. Espera. Por encima del número de serie, cat. AT Guatemala 1. Tienes una Z a la derecha. A la izquierda. En la izquierda tienes una, una Z, una, una, un right arrow, una Z hacia la derecha que indica justo, justo entre Guatemala y número de serie, cat. Eso ahí, eso es. Eso es. Está mostrando los detalles. Ahora bájate un poquito. Es, tienes los detalles. Lo que pasa es que esto te muestra diferente porque tienes una pantalla pequeña. ¿vale? Eh, entonces, él se adapta a la pantalla. Esta, esta aplicación IOMS se adapta al tamaño de la pantalla que tenemos. Si es un iPhone, si es un, un tablet o lo que sea. Entonces, supongamos que queremos cambiar una característica, por ejemplo, de ese barco, ¿vale? Que se llama, sube hacia arriba, identificación, sube un poquito, la, a ver, espera, no tanto, no tanto, no tanto. Santiago 1. Ahí, identificación. Tienes el nombre, ¿vale? Santiago 1, ¿vale? Eh, y ahora cambia el 1 por el número 1. Apaga ese y ponte 1. Eso es. Ya está. Ahora, edición, sálvalo. En el botoncito ediciones, salvar. Arriba, un poco hacia arriba. Ahí, Salvarlo. Has hecho el cambio. Vale. Es, es. O sea, no encontró, no encontró histórico, es que el barco no tiene histórico. Puedes cerrar esas dos ventanitas. Ahora, eh, vamos otra vez, sube hasta arriba todo. Y vamos a, a datos de cumplimiento otra vez, o barcos, pinche barcos si quieres. Barcos. Y ahora vete a validación de registros a la derecha, el botón de la derecha, ahí. Ya verás que está ahí corregido el barco tuyo que has cambiado. Bájate un poco. Santiago 1. Y ahora mm -hmm. está cambiado. Has propuesto un cambio. Sí. ¿Ok? Funciona. La pantalla es pequeñita. Pues él tiene, entonces desglosa lo que es una presentación eh, tabular y una presentación vertical. M muchas gracias. Esa es la razón. ¿Vale? Y eso vale para que, quien tenga pantallas pequeñas. Transforma el sistema. Ok. Manuel Manestre tiene, tiene mi colega. ¿Quiere explicar algo más? Sí. Quería comentar este caso precisamente porque es algo que al comentar las características del sistema no hemos dicho porque lo hemos pasado por alto. Pero voy a compartir mi pantalla otra vez. Bien, así es como estaba viendo eh, Carlos de Guatemala. Estaba viendo la interfaz así. Es porque la resolución de su pantalla o el tamaño de su ventana es muy pequeño. El sistema se adapta para mostrar todos los campos sin tener que sobresalir por el lado. Hay dos maneras de solucionar esto. Una es eh, contraer el menú con este botón para tener más sitio, y la otra es en el navegador ajustar el zoom de la aplicación. Si ajustas el zoom y lo bajas un poco, podrás ver la interfaz como la estamos viendo nosotros. Simplemente es así de fácil. Ah, muchas gracias. Muchas gracias, hermano. So, okay, uh, we can we can continue. Anyone has other questions? We are. I'm going to share my screen again to see how many are changing uh, the vessels. Now we have already 12 changes, including the one from Guatemala. We have uh, Trinidad and Tobago changed. 
by Luana. So we can see here. Uh, we have also Croatia, Guatemala, Canada. Uh, oh, sorry, my fault. So as as we uh, have more changes, we have online and active all the information that we have already received as changes. For example, this vessel, I will just say that uh, Panama, if we click it here, we simply can just apply, let's see the Rara, okay? I'll show that what the boss. I will accept this uh, new vessel. And this vessel right now is going to be we just show the filters. The vessel is this one. It says already a new number. You see, this is the new vessel that was issued. Uh, by Vivian, and it's already in the central uh, database of the vessel manager of the IMS. So it's that simple. E moving on to the others. So let's see if we have any new additional changes, not anymore. So can wait a little bit more for this exercise? We also forgot to say that we can export this list Senita in any moment. This is, is going to be used for, uh, for the secretary, but to, also for you. We can export this to Excel. And those characteristics you can see them there. And this list can be seen here for any purpose we uh, may want. So this is just simple extractions of CSV file, but later on we are going to put this in a better shape in a standard format for everyone. Thank you, Carlos. It looks like we have a pretty good response right here with the edits that have been made and I, I don't see any more um, question. So I'm wondering if it would be appropriate to move on to the next portion of the, the exercise, noting okay. the time. Okay. So uh, right now, let's set those ones. Then maybe we need to put a button here to accept uh, all of them, all of them by country. So we'll start from, from zero and we can now edit an authorization list. That's the second exercise. And we will start from by cleaning all these. Okay. Perfect. So we don't have any uh, new vessel change in the uh, waiting list. So we just need to go to the vessel managing, choose a vessel for your own flag. I will pick up uh, one from uh, South Africa, for example. And we go to uh, now one that is operative. You see, you have several ones, but let's pick up the Capensis, for example. This vessel let's move to the authorizations. Oh sorry, it's the 
funktionieren. So this one, authorization lists is where we should change. This vessel, it's not, uh, it's inactive. It's operating, but it, it's not active in, in any of the lists. I will just put a list uh, and of course, this one, uh, we can only edit right now for now, right, Manuel? We cannot add new ones for now. Let's pick Hello. up one. Yes. Go on, please. Sí, o sea, para, para añadir la lista, tienes que seleccionarlo en el, en el ah. multiselector de que está okay. la, en el grupo de listas de autorizaciones. Cartensis, exactly, that's it. This one. Eso es. Now, o sea, si uh, no tiene nin, ninguna autorización, tendrías que añadirla okay, desde ahí. Ok, ok, ok. Es. So, I will just add the positive list and uh, 2023, oh, sorry, 3, 2001 to 2023-1231. Don't forget, we are always using international uh, date system, right? Why doesn't choose that date? January 2023. And here, because, oh, I know. 31 December 32. So this is maybe let's put, put an explicit renewal. And this is notification date. This is the, uh, for example, it's a long liner, it's a commercial activity in the Atlantic. Uh, and we don't have catch quota, we don't have year quota. And this basically, I want to save this. And this is the exercise we should do. This is the first one. It's saved. Yeah. I just need to go here also to save it again. I believe, yes, it is. If we move on to the vessels, record validation must be there. It's not there. Maybe we don't have that functionality uh, working for the moment, right? No. So it means that the vessel capacity has already, let's, let's pick up the vessel records directly yes hmm. for some reason it didn't save this okay so let's put it here Again, and let's see if you can. I can save it.
those, those are the good things of the, it doesn't show, maybe we have an issue here, they're saving the authorizations, but uh, uh, that's the way it will work. This is the good thing of working with software that still under development and under validation, but those, normally those things can happen. So please try and then the other way is just before, um, instead of just moving to the vessel, the record validation, just change uh, your, uh, let's put it, change your, your uh, authorization list, anyone, or add a new one and try to check it if that's uh, in, there, in the system uh, by just moving outside the vessel model and just entering here. I'm going to do an example right now. So I have changed capensis. I will show filters. I will check that capensis from South Africa. This vessel has in fact changed as a new a new uh, authorization list. Oh, it doesn't have it. Maybe uh, the button of to save it's not properly working and is not passing this to the central database. Uh, is that correct? No, Manuel or Jose? Carlos, uh -huh. es, es extraño, no, no sé por qué no está funcionando, sí, es evidente que no, no funciona, porque al, al darle al botón de, de guardar debería salir un, un modal preguntando de que si quieres guardar. Vamos a poner aquí Pero un 3, es extraño, 32. Acabo de hacer la prueba y, y he pasado un, una lista nueva a, a la tabla de, de validación. sí. Sí, no, no entiendo qué puede estar pasando. Vale, pues voy a intentar, puede que sea un problema de Firefox también. Voy a poner otra vez, ¿vale? Entonces aquí ponen, pongo la fecha eh, de 2003 de enero, 1 de enero de 2003 a 30 y... 1 de diciembre de 2003. Commercial, vamos a poner exactamente lo mismo. Atlántico. Special permit, esto es una cosa. Entonces vamos a salvarlo. Vamos a poner aquí esto alguna, a ver si pasa alguna. No, no lo salvo. Doesn't save it. Sí, hay algún problema por ahí. Ok. So, let me get vessel to it. Oh, maybe this vessel, it's because this vessel doesn't have the historical information. Uh, ok, this is something that we are going to solve. But try to, try to do this exercise uh, and to see if we have it. Yes. This is the Zara Quattro. So we are having here changes. The South Africa is here already. Let's see if it, it changed the authorization. It doesn't have the authorization list here. But it's it was because I've changed the I've changed the, the, the size of the vessel, the characteristic. So I changed to 32.3. So Perdona, Carlos. Sí. ¿Podrías cerrar el Firefox y abrirlo en Google Chrome y hacer lo mismo? Vale. Pero mientras tanto, min, meanwhile, uh, I will just check. This. So, so I don't know if I have Chrome on this computer. Let's see if I have Chrome. Chrome. No, I don't have it here. Let's see. I need, we need to check that later on. Uh, I have I have the Chrome in my laptop, not in my desktop. Oh, no. So uh, we should try that later on. Right now, what we need is just to see if it's working, and we'll check up if this is an issue with the Firefox. I don't believe so, but then. So right up to now, we have only two uh, two 
changes on the authorizations. To Bluefin Catch. This is this was a change in Guatemala, and this is a change in the positive list from Mon Jose in Asi Sans. The other one is from Guatemala from Carlos. And the other one was for myself. Thank you, Carlos. I, yeah, I can see those changes on the screen. Um, does anyone have any questions about the change in authorization for this? I see not as many CPCs as have made the edits as in the previous exercise. So I'm wondering if there are any questions or if we should continue on to the next exercise. Senegal, please, you have the floor. Voilà, merci pour la présentation. J'avais pas, je n'ai pas une question spécifique sur le, sur les modifications qui ont été apportées, mais c'est plutôt des problèmes d'accès. Tout à l'heure, je, je, je parlais de la question de, de qui peut accéder, quel utilisateur peut accéder à, disons, à, à la gestion des navires. Mais là, moi, dans l'interface que j'ai, je rappelle que c'est une version V1143. Et la version affichée, affichée dans la dans l'écran, c'est la version 1.1.48. Est-ce que c'est la même version Mais moi, je n'arrive pas à voir les navires et donc à accéder à ces, euh, disons, à, bon, ces informations donc pour modifier des, des autorisations ou la liste des navires. Okay. C'était ça ma préoccupation. Ok, merci Madou. Euh... Vous êtes dans la version Sandbox IOMS, celle-là. Amadou Oui, euh, bon, je ne vois pas très bien, mais bon. Non, il faut voir le, le navigateur ici. Le top. Ah, ah d'accord. Ok, c'est pas très nous avons, nous avons la connexion. Ok, d'accord. Sandbox, oui. No, you, have, you have the link on the, on the chat. Ok. Uh, ok, share, merci. So just click that one. Oui, je vois, oui. d'accord. D'accord, c'est fait. Je suis en train de voir. Thank you, Guatem or thank you, Senegal. Excuse me. Um, thank you, Carlos. I see Guatemala. J'ai quelques soucis, mais j'ai vu le lien, c'est bien. Donc je vais, mais j'ai quelques soucis de connexion. Il y a, il y a pas de problème. Je, je suis en train de charger ça. Okay. So, Brian, you must guide. You, you, I don't, I don't see the the hands raised. <laughs> you must. No problem. Take care of. Yes, we have Guatemala next, please. Gracias, solo con una pregunta. Los dos cambios que yo hice y que aparecen reflejados en la pantalla que estamos viendo, no sé si ustedes los tienen que validar o con que uno los valide, ya aparecen como válidos en el sistema, porque al principio no me aparecían y hasta que ustedes eh, desplegaron esta pantalla, ya me aparecieron en, en, mi, en el sandbox que, que yo estoy trabajando, que estoy haciendo los cambios. Entonces, mi pregunta es si uno hace los cambios y se vienen reflejados, Oh, ustedes tienen que autorizar después de que uno haya hecho los cambios. Gracias. Anovo, I will refer to you the response. No, en teoría, cualquier cambio que, o modificación que hagas en la página de registro de barcos pasa a validación. Y todos los cambios que haces en la página de validación, mal llamada página de validación, 
eh, se hacen inmediatamente en esa lista y se quedan ahí hasta que algún super, un usuario de la secretaría pulsa el botoncito verde que se vea en pantalla para, para pasarlos al registro central. O sea, hasta que no se valide o se acepte el cambio por parte de la secretaría, esos cambios no aparecen reflejados en la lista central. O sea, sí. en el registro verdadero. Espero que sea esto lo que me preguntabas. Así es, muchas gracias. Ok, Brian. Uh, do you have any more hands raised? Ah, Panama. Yes, we have Panama. Please, Panama, go ahead. Buen día de Panamá, pero que también. Eh, en base a este ejercicio, sí tenía una consulta. En el caso de Panamá, nosotros tenemos permitidos que las autorizaciones duren por un año o dos años. Pero entiendo que según las directrices del ICAT, esto debe ser simplemente anual. Si me equivoco, ustedes me corrigen. Entonces, realizando el ejercicio en este momento, observo que me permite hacer la extensión de la autorización hasta 2025. Y quería pues confirmar entonces si esto va a ser posible eh, o si se va a mantener en base a las directrices y en caso de que yo esté equivocada, pues que me puedan corregir. Gracias. Thank you. Thank you, Panama. Uh, I think uh, I will ask for help from Jenny, my colleague from comp the compliance department. Uh, this is an exercise. So this is uh, these things can change according to the provisions of ICAT. But uh, please, Jenny, if you can help me on that, can help us on that, please go on. Uh, sorry, could you repeat the question? Yeah, if you, if you can extend to more than the 2025, the the authorization in the, for example, in the case of, uh, uh, I think it was Panama, in the case of Panama in the positive list for more than one year. So ending up, for example, in 2025. Yes, if it's a positive list, it can be more than one year. There are certain recommendations which require yearly or annual reporting. For example, Bluefin must be sent every year, so you can't have more than one year. But in the positive list, I believe it's just until it's until that country decides it's not there okay so uh, i i can add to 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 this uh, explanation for my colleague jenny uh, this so right now the system is free to change yes uh, is, is, we don't have any constraints but at the end when this enter into production the constraints will be the ones that the, each one of the authorization list, each one of the recommendations requires. So uh, if it's not allowed, it's not allowed. It's allowed for two years. We just extending the only leave that for two years and so so on. Basically, this right now, it's a free form. Anyone can change what everyone's, but then we will have those constraints in the future. So uh, we can move on, uh, Brian. Uh, Manuel is also my colleague, Manuel. I think he's, I saw something. Yes, Manuel raised his hand. Um, perhaps first, uh, Venezuela uh, has a, a request for the floor. Please go yes. ahead, Venezuela. Disculpa, es, es, perdón, es solo una pequeña aclaración. Estoy viendo que mucha gente está intentando crear autorizaciones sin rellenar el modo de renovación. Ese campo es obligatorio. Hay que, hay que ponerlo obligatoriamente. Entonces, sí. probablemente les está dando errores porque el campo va vacío. O simplemente recordar que el campo es obligatorio y hay que rellenarlo. Ya está. Gracias. Gracias, hermano. Thank you, Manuel. Venezuela, please. Sí, buenos días. Este, muchas gracias por, por este taller. De verdad que para mí... Es muy bueno porque no domino muy bien el sistema y bueno, estoy aprendiendo algunas cosas. Este, acá revisando, este, no he hecho ninguna modificación, pero revisando ya, este, aquí en el, en el sistema, pude ver que en, en la lista de autorizaciones de barcos de Venezuela aparecen eh, 53 barcos en, en, para la especie pez espada del norte 
y para el especial va a Corea del Norte. Entiendo que ese número de embarcaciones indican que Venezuela dirige las capturas a esas especies y no es así. Entonces quisiera saber, mi pregunta es si existe acá en el sistema algún, alguna forma de modificarlo desde acá, de hacer esa corrección o tendría que enviar un correo para solicitar la modificación. Ok, uh, okay Ocaris, muchas gracias. Uh, I will just con respond in English. So, can you give an example of the of the vessel that you want to 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 change? For example, Anamari, Anamari. No. Can you give us an example? Ajá, eh, no, me refieres a la lista de buques. O sea, tendría que cambiarlo buque por buque, porque, por ejemplo, aquí aparece en toda la lista de embarcaciones que eh, todos están autorizados para pescar túnidos tropicales, pero también aparecen todos autorizados a pescar peces espada del norte y todos... Vale, porque eso tiene que ver con el CP01. Ah, ok, yes. entonces... So, ok, la, la lista, la lista uh, positiva, the, the positive list, and uh, uh, maybe Jenny missed, can complement it, but uh, I will just summarize it. The positive list has associated four additional lists, uh, each, uh, and the dates used are those ones associated to the positive list, and that is uh, swordfish <laughs> north, south, uh, Albacore North and Albacore South. If I recall, if we go to the to the form, let's just go fast to the form on, on STO1, uh, for in CPO1, uh, which is somewhere this one. This is the form that we are going to use later on for uh, offline completion and online completion, right? It's very similar to this one. Maybe we need, okay, you see, this is the ones associated. When you just put in a vessel, a date from and a date to and the renewal mode, you can click, for example, uh, vessel A, let's so put it uh, an example, I will just pick up on vessel, the Venezuela 1663, for example. Uh, and you put here a date, uh, one, oh, one, one, uh, 2023, so. Maybe this is an error for my side, 2023, one, one, two, And then here, 2023, 1231. So you can choose the ones, for example, those ones. So we don't have dates here. We just have the dates associated to the positive. Sí, pero... That's the question you asked for, right? Sí, pero lo que pasa es que yo entendía esa parte cuando trabajo ese listado, que cuando indicamos, por lo menos allí, yo solamente indico que ese listado de buques está autorizado a pescar solo túnidos tropicales porque son nuestras especies objetivo. Pero en el caso de albacora del norte y pejepada del norte, no, no lo resalto porque nosotros no dirigimos la captura a esas especies, sino que son especies de captura incidental. Por eso me llama la atención que aparece como que autorizamos, o sea, como que tenemos la lista de buques autorizadas a pescar eh, esas especies, pues, como, como, como especie objetivo. Y realmente no lo es. Por eso hacía la pregunta. Ah, vale. Ok. So, uh... thank, thank you, Venezuela. I understand your concern now. And I'll um, just note, Jenny made a comment in the chat that I think can help explain and that highlights this is a test system um, so it's not real functional data at this moment um, when the system becomes active if there's any changes that need to be made 
um, a revised CPO1 form can be sent in. And we would expect at that time that what you see in this portal would be representative of your actual fleet. So I think for the moment, um, we can address your concerns by saying this is a test environment and that the the functional environment in the future will take into account um, some of the information that you mentioned. Okay, so uh, okay, I'm not going to, see, we're not going to enter this. This is a, a, a basic a reporting error that we need to address later on. So we can change that later on with the new form, trying to eliminate those those lists. So, uh, Brian, uh, just to, to to just cut a little bit, uh, we have, don't have much time. Uh, we have more exercises. I was thinking about uh, several exercises, like changing the owner, the operator, and so on. But uh, what my suggestion will be to leave this sandbox uh, system online for a couple of weeks. We can just keep it this way uh, in order to anyone trying to test and just uh, doing some exercises here uh, and uh, to even to get used to it. And uh, we can uh, this way uh, have, give some time to the users to, to test the system and see what are the issues and what are the and at the same time, you can just maintain the corrections there. So what is do you think about this proposal? And this is also for everybody. Yes, thank you, Carlos. Yeah, I, I know we only have about 45 minutes left. So I think your suggestion is a good one um, that we can leave the sandbox up for CPCs to test over the next few weeks. And for the meeting today, we can progress in our agenda, um, perhaps to agenda item 4C, Unless, Carlos, you'd like to spend five minutes or very short amount of time on agenda item 4B, which is the offline completion. Okay. Oh, sorry. Uh, I need to just put it again. So the, the, I can just discuss a little bit, show a little bit this uh, part. Uh, is basically what we have seen right now. I will just go to, to, the, to, the, to share my screen again. Sorry for just disconnecting it. So let's move on. Compliance and the vessel. So when we have the vessel manager, you see we have one uh, part which uh, is not here. But it's in here in the vessel record validation. Then possibly you need to change that. Uh, sometimes we have a lot of a lot of people just doing changes. We have one thing called the import CP01, right? It's not working right now. We it's uh, it's not it's in progress. It's very complex, but the idea is just uh, as we have it now. We can export a current CPC and complete the form like the ones I've just checked, shown, uh, we will be able to complete this form. So this form will, don't, will not have some elements that are right now required, like the flag correspondent. Uh, this will be, be basically read-only. The person who exports the form, the form will be always the latest form, the ver latest version. This is the version 2022, but we should have a version 2024 next year. So we will allowed us to upload the information we have right now into the system to a form, change it offline, and then import it again. And this will go to the uh, what we saw here. So where the idea is to uh, in, uh, export, treat work offline, and then import using this, this uh, is basically a, uh, picture that allowed us to import and this will go to what we call the preliminary uh, database of vessel record, right? okay? So in the past, like we, we did a vessel, one of the characteristics of a vessel or one authorization, uh, those vessels will come to here and the person will be able to check in advance and the secretary, whoever needs to revise it and confront this information with the information we have on the database in order to uh, pass it to the central database on vessel. So all the system will work that way. We are not going to update directly. We are going just first 
put this in a pre-layer system of the tables that allow us then to cross check and to then replace after everything is verified. And that is the way it will work. So the, on, the offline completion will be the same process that we have, we have it right now. Uh, and we will be able to do this exercise uh, more or less in the same way. Maybe, maybe, uh, and we are studying that part according because we have this, uh, is, we have issued this uh, and discussed this several times uh, with some uh, CPCs also last, uh, last year in February about the possible need to split up this uh, CPO1 form into two subforms, one containing CPU1A with the vessel characteristics and the ownership, CP1C, that will be a form one, and the other one only link it to the authorizations, the CP1B. So uh, maybe we should, uh, to make it easier, to make it less complex, the process of exporting and, uh, in, of exporting and importing. But we are working on that to see if this that is feasible. And with that, we also want to uh, receive some feedback from uh, some users to see if it's really uh, I know that this has been with us this form for at least 10 years. It's, it worked quite well. People is, are used to it, but I'm not talking about changing many things on the form. I'm just talking about splitting that in two subforms instead of having only one with these three elements. But I would just appreciate, we will appreciate advice and uh, comments from uh, the participants if that is possible because I think it's an important decision that we have to do. Thank you, Carlos. Um, I think that's a good conversation for us to take up in, in February, but perhaps we can get some initial reactions from CPCs here. Um, Venezuela, I see your hand is still up, but I believe it is a, a leftover or legacy hand, as it is called, from your previous intervention. Um, so I'll appreciate if you could lower it if that's the case. Um, otherwise, you will certainly be recognized. No problem. Thank you so much. The U.S., please go ahead. Yes, um, thank you. Uh, I wanted to, to I'm, I look forward to this conversation too, because as you said, we're very used to this uh, forum that we've been using for quite some time. And I would expect, um, you know, any you know, changes in the way with, that we use it to take a, an adjustment period. I wanted to ask, um, what is, so I'm just thinking about how the, the United States, how we submit our vessel lists where, um, where once a vessel, once a vessel's authorization expires, assuming that that vessel remains active, then we often can re-report it in that form with the same, um, with the same information. So I was wondering how that would be affected by um, IOMS. Would it be necessary for us to, rather than simply kind of upload? For us, we we have. Um, monthly updates based on the way that our, our permitting systems work. So would it make sense for us to, um, would, I, I guess I'm curious if we'd be able to essentially do the same thing of update, updating a monthly update that includes um, reauthorizations for vessels and um, any new vessels all included in the same form, or would it require us to kind of go through and um, check the details and reauthorize the vessels in the system itself. Um, I, I hope that question makes sense, but happy to elaborate um, if I need to clarify anything. Thank you, Melanie. Yeah, yeah let me see if I can respond to, uh, to that. Uh, the idea is to mimic the, the what we will do right now, to uh, trying to avoid many differences in, in oh, oh, I mute, I mute, okay. You are listening to me? Mm -hmm. Yes, we can hear you, Carlos. Okay, perfect. So the idea is trying to mimic as much as we can, taking into consideration the differences, uh, the the all the processes of authorizations, of renewals, of uh, issuing new vessels, or uh, changing the current ones. Uh, 
uh, independent of the, the period, periodicity. So it can be one month, can be one year, whatever. Or can be only one list or can be several lists. That's the idea. But we need to adapt this to a multi-user system. So uh, in some cases, we have to put to, we have to put some constraints uh, in order to make this uh, process uh, somehow manageable. And that's that's where we're going to put some some limitations. Instead of just uh, sending everything in a CP1 form, which is for USA, it's working quite well, perfect. But other countries are having possible problems trying to put only in one form uh, renewals, new vessels, the, out, the listing of vessels, and so on. That's, uh, I think, where we can uh, improve uh, the process. So just basically splitting up the possibilities in more uh, simple and very effective uh, uh, objectives. So if it's a renewal, it's a renewal. The vessel has to be registered. Uh, the vessel have a status. Uh, if it can, can be uh, inactive, but registered can be de uh, destroyed and that will never be uh, uh, receive uh, uh, authorizations again, uh, or can be simply inactive because uh, an authorization has expired. So any change will be only one form linked to STO1B and that's it. But basically it's just trying to split up the functionality of each one of the things. So not to get into moving much away from what we do right now, but trying to uh, fine tune and improve these parts. I don't know if I was, I was clear in the explanation because it's not an easy question to respond to, but that's, that will be the idea. Yes, please go ahead, you guys. Yeah, thank you. Um, that's that's very helpful. Um, and it sounds like you're contemplating all, all the various ways that many CPCs use the form. Um, for the, uh, just I guess for some transparency, I, I would mention the reason behind my question is because what, what I'm hoping to avoid is um, having to go through like vessel by vessel and confirming information in the system if it can just be bulk up uploaded. But it sounds like you guys are contemplating that. So many yeah. thanks. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yes. Wonderful. Uh, thank you for the helpful back and forth. It's certainly a complicated yet important topic. Um, Carlos, noting the time, I'm wondering if we should begin a short presentation by Banuel on the status of the flux integration, which... Yes. Yes, I think it's exactly. just let, give me just a, a few seconds to say one important sure. thing. Yeah. Uh, the. The, the, made, the major decisions on, about the, if we are going to split the form, the CP1 form in two will be made in February. But uh, the feedback we receive here, it's important to, to make us, to give us the possibility to advance because doing one uh, offline and online completion in one form is one thing and doing in two forms is another thing. So uh, in order to advance on this process, we are going to uh, work with the current form, CP01, and trying to see if we can uh, make progress until February, until the, our meeting, uh, in order to, to advance as much as we can in, all, in the offline completion. So basically that's I, what I uh, understood from all the, well, from the discussion we had, which is not, was not big, but I think at least give us an idea that in general, there is a preference to maintain this only one form instead of going to the two forms. But uh, right, that's where, where I'm going to move on on the development, just picking up on this one. Unless anyone has another additional uh, element to, to say, but I think we can move on to, to, to the flux. Excellent. To Thank you, Carlos. Uh, Manuel, I would um, ask, looking at the time we have remaining, if you could attempt to keep your presentation around 15 minutes. I know this is a complicated topic and the the Secretariat has been performing a lot of work, so I understand if there's quite a bit of material here, but if possible, it would be helpful if you could um, present for about 10 or 15 minutes. Thank you. Gracias, Ryan. Intentaré ser rápido. Bien, vamos a explicar un poco de lo que se trata aquí.
el intercambio de datos de pesquerías es bastante complicado. Los barcos de pesca pueden trabajar en todo el mundo, en todas las áreas. La pesca está regulada por muchas partes, autoridades nacionales, organizaciones regionales, en acuerdos bilaterales, multilaterales, etc. Se necesitan muchos informes para diferentes tareas, eh, detalles de buque, autorizaciones de pesca, posiciones, datos de desembarque, ventas, transferencias, transbordos... Desafortunadamente existe toda una gama ilimitada de, formula, de formatos de datos, desde documentos en papel hasta los diferentes tipos de archivos, Excel, Word, archivos de texto, CSV, XML. Además, hay muchas maneras de intercambiar estos datos. Eh, los datos en papel se envían por correo postal, por fax, pero también hay correos electrónicos, páginas web, servicios, discos, etc. Esto es muy, muy complejo. Un pabellón recibe datos electrónicos de cada buque en el mar, datos de UMS, diarios de abordo. Este pabellón tiene que informar a otro estado o grupo de estados y en algunos casos también a una organización regional. También otras partes tienen que informar, por lo que al final hay muchos intercambios de datos de, de pesca diferentes en diferentes formatos y con muchos protocolos y esta complejidad aumenta año tras año. El número de partes no se puede cambiar. El número de organismos regionales podría incluso aumentar con el tiempo. Eh, la simplificación de las diferentes reglas está fuera del alcance cuando se discuten soluciones técnicas o al menos podrían verse influidas mínimamente. Así que la estandarización se puede aplicar tanto para los formatos de datos como para los sistemas de comunicación. Ahí es donde entra Flux. Además, Flux elimina todas las conexiones punto a punto, centraliza el mantenimiento de las operaciones en un nodo central, permitiendo el control de los flujos de datos y siguiendo los intercambios en ese nodo central. Y por si fuera poco, utiliza la última tecnología de encriptación para que el contenido permanezca privado e íntegro. ¿Qué es Flux? Es el estándar mundial para datos de pesquería. Significa lenguajes de pesquería para el intercambio universal. Se adoptó por las Naciones Unidas el 27 de abril de 2016 con el estándar P1000. La Unión Europea y las Naciones Unidas lideran este estándar con aportaciones muy importantes de Estados Unidos, de Tailandia, de Japón. La Organización para la Alimentación, la Comisión para las Pesquerías del Atlántico Nordeste y otras. Su objetivo principal es garantizar la interoperabilidad entre las partes, eliminar duplicidades y simplificar todo y mejorar la comunicación segura entre todas las partes. ¿Y qué es FluxDL? Es la capa de transporte de Flux. Es un software cuya intención es proveer una implementación al protocolo de FluxDL. Una capa de transporte fiable utilizando servicios SOAP operando sobre una cadena de nodos de reenvío que funcionan de una manera agnóstica al negocio. El software de FluxTL se usará para interconectar cualquier aplicación de negocio que se comunique a través de mensajes XML, incluidos los sistemas preexistentes que no hayan sido diseñados para usar FluxTL. El concepto de sobre. La aplicación eh, proporciona estos datos en color verde al nodo de flux. El nodo envuelve el mensaje en un sobre con la dirección de envío y lo envía a través de la capa de transporte de flux. El mensaje viaja por la capa de transporte totalmente encriptado. El nodo receptor desenvuelve el mensaje y lo entrega a la aplicación recibida. Los datos recibidos son exactamente iguales a los que envió la aplicación emisora. Y la respuesta seguirá el mismo patrón. Utilizando la dirección del sobre, irá por la misma capa de transporte de vuelta al remitente. Vale, ahora voy a pasar a explicar los avances que el equipo de desarrollo de OMS ha hecho con respecto a la integración de Flux. Hemos tenido una primera frase donde hemos tenido muchas reuniones con los responsables del proyecto Flux en la Unión Europea. Algunos de ellos están presentes en la reunión. Eh, también hemos tenido que analizar y entender toda la documentación, 
eh, planificar la mejor estrategia para conseguir nuestros objetivos y crear un entorno de pruebas interno eh, que funciona solo en nuestra intranet. Una vez hechas las pruebas, pasamos a crear un entorno de aceptación, que es un paso indispensable para que la Unión Europea integre nuestro nodo en la red de producción. El primer paso fue crear una máquina virtual en la nube de Rackspace que llamamos Flux ACC. Es todo este recuadro azul. Es una máquina Linux Ubuntu 22 con 8 CPUs virtuales, 8 GB de RAM y 160 GB de almacenamiento. Dentro de este servidor virtual hemos instalado un servidor de aplicaciones virtuales que se llama Docker, que es este recuadro verde. Dentro de Docker hemos creado un contenedor a partir de la imagen oficial del motor de la base de datos Postgres que contendrá la base de datos necesaria para nuestro nodo. El contenedor está representado por este cuadro naranja. También dentro de Docker hemos creado un contenedor con una imagen del servidor web Apache. Este no hará de servidor web, solo hará de proxy inverso. Es necesario para encriptar los mensajes que envía el nodo. Para configurar este servidor se negociaron con los administradores de la Unión Europea las claves públicas y privadas y la cadena de confianza para establecer la comunicación segura con el nodo central. Y por último, dentro también de Docker, creamos un contenedor con una imagen de JBoss con Wildfly, que es un, un servidor de aplicaciones. Aquí es donde van a estar las aplicaciones propias de FluxTL. Es este enorme cuadro naranja que queda justo abajo. Dentro de este contenedor de aplicaciones es donde van las cinco aplicaciones que componen el nodo de Flux. Tenemos Flux Web, que se encarga del transporte hacia otros nodos de Flux. Tenemos los web services, que se encargan de recibir los mensajes desde otros nodos de Flux. Tenemos el puente, que se encarga de ser el enlace entre las capas de negocio y las otras aplicaciones del nodo. Tenemos un servidor de, de monitor, que se encarga de servir una pequeña página web con información de control del nodo. Tenemos el conector NAV, que hace de traductor entre el estándar XML de Flux y las capas de negocio que no... Eh, reciban o emitan los mensajes en el formato de flux. Esta tra eh, traducción tiene que ser configurada y esta configuración no es fácil. Cada una de estas aplicaciones está representada por est estos cuadros de color morado y cuando inicias las aplicaciones se crea automáticamente la base de datos de flux que está representada por el cuadro rojo que está dentro del motor de la base de datos. Las aplicaciones se comunican entre sí las cinco aplicaciones, a través de unas colas de comunicación y a través de la base de datos, a la cual todas tienen acceso y se comunican con otros nodos a través del proxy inverso. El último paso para configurarlo fue ejecutar un script de, G de SQL para configurar la base de datos con todos los datos particulares de ICAT para que pueda establecer la comunicación con el nodo central de la Unión Europea. También me gustaría recordar que todos estos eh, softwares y aplicaciones son libres y gratuitos, o sea que no han supuesto ningún coste adicional al proyecto. Eh, todo este proceso de instalación y configuración fue muy complejo al principio, pero a medida que fuimos comprendiendo los mecanismos internos, fue, eh, se fue haciendo más fácil. Tuvimos que hacer muchos ensayos. Y, y eso nos hacía que tuviéramos que empezar desde el principio. Así que hicimos un script que unificaba todos los pasos en un, en un solo paso. Y sirve para poder instalar y configurar todo el sistema usando solo unos pocos ficheros de, de configuración. Este script es, será de mucha ayuda en el futuro cuando tengamos que configurar el nodo de producción y será puesto a disposición de cualquier persona que quiera crear un nodo semejante al que tenemos nosotros aquí en la Secretaría de CAT. El entorno de aceptación está funcionando. Tenemos el, en la página web de monitorización activa 
aunque las pruebas eh, llegan muy poco a poco, estamos todavía haciendo las primeras pruebas. Y con, este, con esta aplicación podemos ver eh, los errores y las estadísticas del envío. El, los siguientes pasos que daremos serán conectar este nodo de flux a nuestra aplicación de barcos, la que está en pruebas en Sandbox ahora mismo. Y ya están desarrollados los servicios que aceptan los barcos que llegan de flux. Cuando llega eh, el XML de un barco en el formato de flux, hay ya un servicio que lo recoge y lo pasa a la tabla de validación, igual que en los que habéis enviado en los ejercicios. Y nada, eso es todo. Muchas gracias. Espero no haber tardado demasiado. Y pedido perdón a las traductoras si he hablado muy rápido. ¿Alguna pregunta? Thank you, Manuel. That was a, a perfect amount of time and a very impressive amount of work on such a complicated topic. So thank you for your efforts and the clear and concise presentation. Um, does anyone have questions? I, um, Carlos, I see you're welcome to take the floor, of course, um, and other CPCs. If you have any questions, please go ahead and raise your hand. Thank you. Please, uh, uh, if anyone has the hands raised, I can just uh, be the last one. This is Not just yet, a Carlos. Go ahead. Okay, this is just a compliment. Uh, just to say, this this is right now being developed uh, for EU, but in the future, the flux, the UN flux, can be used by any CPC of ICAT that intends to adopt the flux for automatic data exchange. Uh, the flux is we are working right now with two domains. You also has already presented a, a, to the presentation in February in the online reporting meeting we had this year. Uh, but he, he has several domains. Uh, we are using only for now only two. So and those domains cover a lot of uh, elements and a lot of the uh, data domains on the spectrum of the fishery sector. So including the, the logbooks and other information, also if right now information on DMS. So it's very useful, it's very powerful. Uh, it costs a lot in terms of the development, but I think it, as soon as the information is, it, as the system is mounted, uh, I believe ICAT has learned a lot with it. We have, uh, we can also uh, provide based on our learning curve, we can also, uh, also provide advice in the future if any CPC wants also to adopt the flux to, for their own systems. Because uh, I, I have the, the I have the knowledge that com, uh, some countries, some ICAT CPCs may uh, think about uh, in adopting this system for future use and also will also benefit from this work we're doing right now. Thank you. Thank you, Carlos, for that helpful context. I'll just wait a few more moments to see if any other CPCs or if any CPCs have any questions about Manuel's presentation. And of course, this uh, meeting will be recorded and posted um, later. So if you can rewatch Manuel's presentation or download the presentation from the next cloud should you have any questions. Okay, Carlos, I believe we can move on to agenda item 4D, discussion of validation of vessel record information through IOMS. Um, in addition to 4D, we have two on their agenda items that shouldn't take too long. So perhaps exactly. we could spend five to 10 minutes on this agenda item. Yes, that will be very fast. Uh, I just have, we have a note from uh, USA from now on. Uh, requesting that we just maintain the sandbox for working until December. So I don't see any problem with that. Uh, we can maintain it uh, online. And at the same time, we're going to update with the new functionality, the, this sandbox system to uh, any, for anyone to see what, what, how this, how the progress is going on. 
Okay, so uh, let's move on to the the screen share. Uh, I've created right now, just in a few seconds, <laughs> the some elements for this information. This is basically it's information that uh, we need to address it later on in February, uh, Brian. But uh, uh, this is only to have some ideas, some uh, comments from the the. Uh, participants in order to uh, gather some information for to, that will facilitate us the process then in February. So uh, this explains, this slide explains, it's already in, in next slide, I'll just update it right now. It's called IMS Vessel Validation Process. So I will put this underline the word validation because the validation is rarely difficult uh, and I, that's why I, I will explain very in a very uh, well, very summarized way, what we have. So right now we have the vessel registry. It's just registering a vessel with their characteristics in a given moment in time. That vessel is, is going to stay there forever. And unless there is an explicit request to eliminate that vessel uh, because it's not uh, truly a vessel or was an error or something, it was a duplication that we need to to merge with other information. And then we have the authorization list that will progress in time. And with that, we will maintain a history of the vessel across all the transactions that were made, right? Right now, what we do is just, we will have a, a current system that takes care of uh, online completion, online, uh, the direct completion. So by normally we just do that for just checking and doing some minor edits but the, the majority relies on, on CPO1. All the information is there, we, and we only uh, check the information against what we have right now that was provided by that CPC in the past. We have issues, we still have issues with, for example, a vessel that changes the, 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 the flag, for example. Uh, vessel, we have sell, sell the, sold the vessel to another country, another CPC of ICAT, and what it did not inform the ICAT of the, the flag to which the vessel was sent and the new the vessel, the vessels just send the information and the vessel becomes a duplicate, right? We don't have information on the previous uh, flag and that's why we have this type of issues. And that's why we have a system that is not uh, sufficient, it's not, uh, it's very difficult to, 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 to find these type of duplications, but that's what we do. We, the secretary, what he do is just does a, a validation of the consistency of the information according to what we have in terms of history. And this is what we call basic validation, right? Of the system coming on those. Then we have, sorry. Then we have uh, the options for doing that inside IMS. It's integrated. We have everything, is, uh, everyone is able to see. So the information is checked for directly uh, for consistency of the information provided of the changes that are going to be made and also the elements that are requiring each one of the fields in terms of codes, in terms of size of the information and so on. So we have several options. Option one is uh, put all that responsibility in the CPC and only check this part of uh, uh, internally so by the RMS, so we'll take care of it. So we, maybe we don't need to pass through that process that we have seen that it's in the, what we call the pre-layer database that is shown that requires a special validation of the secretariat or let's say acceptance of the secretariat as Jenny proposed. We may have an option too, which is pass all this responsibility to uh, the secretariat which I can tell you, as Jenny explained quite well, we don't have a way to validate the information because we don't have the sufficient information to validate, to properly validate a vessel as the right characteristics, the right information, and is the authorization is only issued by US, by a country, right? by a CPC. And then we have the option three, which is more or less in line with what we have in uh, the current system but of course optimized to uh, to an online system like we have in the IMS, so, uh, which is the CPC does the validation and is responsible for validating their own information. And what ICAT does is just accept if no errors are found into the system. And maybe 
uh, that option should be the one that we must try to find uh, um, a consensus here in the way of working with that because we need all us to gather some information, some feedback from uh, the participants to see how we can proceed next uh, in the next intersessional meeting of online reporting working group and that will be really a uh, good help from this group to collect the information on their source about this situation, about these possible, these three uh, options. And I think it's simple, but it, yeah, it has all the, the, the guidelines we need right now to uh, obtain some feedback from the participants. So I defer to you, Brian. Thank you, Carlos. Uh, opening the floor, uh, any CPCs have questions regarding the small, short presentation that Carlos just provided, um, and also noting that um, these conversations will also continue at the February intersessional meeting of this working group. Um, but it, it would be helpful to receive any feedback now um, if CPCs have any questions or concerns. Seeing no requests for the floor, I believe we can close out this agenda item and advance to agenda item five, which is discussions for future training sessions. Um, Carlos, I'd be happy if you could hit on this, but I suppose just as a, an introduction, um, future training sessions is certainly something we can also discuss next February, and it's helpful to discuss these training sections when we learn of the progress of uh, the Secretariat and the development of the IOMS um, so we can better understand the, the needs of the Commission um, and, and areas where that additional training might be helpful. Um, but Carlos, please, if you have anything particular in mind here um, to address additional training sessions, I'd welcome your thoughts. Uh, oh, thank you. Thank you, Brian. Yes, uh, um, this is a bit more uh, relying on also getting some information uh, from the participants to see uh, if uh, some needs are specific needs are needed to the current models already in the develop development. Um, and uh, also, uh, maybe we also need another another training on the vessels with this more in a well advanced stage. Uh, and uh, of course, then uh, the other one will be the form the form manager, which is something that will be we will show that in February and we'll be able to decide. But for what we have up to now, what are the what is the feedback from the participants? Do we need something additional information or some ad additional training uh, on the models we have, for example, for the annual report, for managing the users? And, and this type of, of functionalities that we have right now. So we'd like to have some feedback to get us put together some information in order to come up with some, some uh, advanced feedback for, for, the, for February. And if anyone has something to add, that will be basically the item of the, well, the main goal of this point in the agenda. Thank you, Carlos. And I'll just add too that the Secretariat has done a fantastic job maintaining a record of previous trainings. And many of those trainings are available online um, and can be reviewed. I believe there's a YouTube channel actually um, that IOMS has. And as I noted, these recordings um, are publicly available. So um, you can watch them at your leisure and review training sessions on the previous uh, modules, like the annual reporting module and things of that nature. So it's a great resource and I will add that uh, website link into the chat box so CPCs can view it. Yeah, and in addition to that, uh, Brian, also inside our next cloud, you, we have for all the training sessions, we have also the videos there in the three languages. In addition to the YouTube, because YouTube is a bit limited in this, in the in the in the well level of resolution, and, and sometimes the sound we have to cut it a bit. Uh, here uh, we have everything uh, 
anyone can download, takes more time, but can you download any of the sessions that we have uh, addressed up to now? And very soon we are going to upload the new ones from this today. Fantastic. So yes, the, the next cloud is also a great resource. Thank you for highlighting that, Carlos. I do not see any hands requesting the floor at the moment. Um, so I would think that we can progress on to the final agenda item, um, agenda item six, which is other matters. I suppose it would be helpful to highlight um, where we are in the intersessional process for this working group um, and some various business that we have. The increase requests for budget, which was agreed to at the uh, intersessional meeting in February was submitted to the secretariat and the explanatory note for the ICAP budget is now available in the 2023 uh, meeting documents for the ICAT annual meeting and chapter 14 concerns IOMS. And if you look at that document, which is STF 203, um, you'll see an increase in budgetary request um, as part of that proposal for IOMS, which will facilitate a number of things, um, including developers, um, front and back end developers to help advance the, the goals and priorities of the working group and IOMS. In addition, uh, heading into the annual meeting, I will work with the Secretariat to prepare a status report of the working group for our work this year in 2023, which will be reported out to the Commission, I believe, um, during the annual meeting. Um, to brief, of course, the Commission on our work. And I think that uh, mostly concludes my um, thoughts under this agenda item, but as it is other matters, I'd also ask Carlos um, or if any CPCs have anything they would like to raise at this point in time. Let's give some time to the CPCs and then we'll just... Sure thing. Uh, okay, so if you allow me, Brian, uh, this would be very, very sum a summary since uh, uh, just explaining about uh, the difficulties we have found this year uh, due to the workload uh, of the Secretariat in, with, with all the meetings in which you are involved. Uh, in many cases, uh, myself and Carlos, we have spent a huge amount of time in other methods, so and dedicated only a couple of percent of our time to, to the IOMS project. Thanks uh, to my colleagues, uh, Manuel, Jose and Dashiel, which is uh, dedicated, well, tremendous dedication to, to, this, to this work on the last couple of months, two or three months, which was really a tremendous effort from their side. And without our proper support, myself and Carlos Mayer, let's see if we can just uh, in the future trying to solve these issues, especially with my uh, more uh, time that will be dedicated to the IMS uh, into the future. So especially from January onwards, we're trying to, to solve the situation, uh, trying to uh, put me more on the side of the IMS team in order to guide them and to work with them uh, in order to improve the progress that we're doing right now. It's been very difficult uh, uh, to do all that, but. That's why I want to give a special thanks to my colleagues uh, on this because they, they're doing a great job on that. Thank you. Thank you, Carlos, for those points. I would very much like to echo my thanks to the entire secretariat and the IOMS team for their wonderful work uh, in preparations for this meeting, uh, but also just in developing IOMS. And as you mentioned, it's a tremendous effort by the whole team, and we're very thankful for your work on this as it's very important to the mission of ICAP. Um, I still see no hand, so I think I can take it that we can conclude the meeting. Um, I would just again like to thank the Secretariat as well as the translators for working with us today um, and helping us facilitate a successful meeting.
I do see uh, one final hand, uh, Republic of Guinea, please. I believe your microphone may be muted. We cannot hear you. Bonjour, c'est Collier Lansanand de la République de Guinée, correspondant à la statistique. Euh, je voudrais remercier le secrétariat pour avoir organisé l'atelier. Euh, J'ai été pris par assez de programmes euh, gouvernementaux, donc je n'ai pas pu suivre correctement la réunion. Euh, J'avais des questions au niveau de comment renseigner Euh, certains formulaires à partir euh, de l'application IOMS, mais malheureusement, bon, j'ai pas bien suivi la réunion à cause de la connexion et aussi à cause de sa préoccupation. Bon, certainement, je vais écrire euh, d'un moment à l'autre euh, au secrétariat, comme on a l'habitude de le faire, pour euh, avoir les réponses euh, à mes préoccupations. Je vous remercie et je remercie le secrétariat. Thank you for your comments, Guinea. Uh, Carlos, you can uh, please go ahead and respond, and then I see Morocco has also requested the floor. Yeah, this is just a reminder to everyone uh, to please, if you have any question, any request for support, uh, link it to the IMS, send the email to general, because if it goes to info, if it goes to Carlos or to A or B, uh, it takes a lot of time to reach us. That uh, we are a team. We need to uh, respond. For uh, if it goes to general, it goes to the IMS team. So it's me, Carlos, Manuel, Dashiell, and all the So otherwise, it sometimes is very difficult. We are receiving three hundred emails per day uh, through info, for example, and all the other uh, mailboxes we have. It's very difficult to find something linked to a request for support in IMS if it does not go to general. And please don't forget, send that, whatever it is, if it's linked to the IMS, please send it to general IMS, ICAT.int, please, thank you. A very helpful reminder, Carlos, thank you. Morocco, please, you have the floor. Euh, bonjour tout le monde. Euh, tout d'abord, je tiens à remercier toute l'équipe IOMS pour euh, cet atelier et pour les ateliers précédents et futurs, euh, bien sûr. Euh, C'est une plateforme que nous venons donc de se familiariser. Donc, euh, d'autant plus que le Maroc, euh, donc puisqu'il est déjà parti. Euh, contractante d'une autre OGP qui utilise déjà une plateforme, euh, à savoir la CGPM, ils ont une plateforme DCRF, c'est à peu près le même principe, sauf qu'on ne voulait pas tomber sur les mêmes euh, erreurs, ou je, euh, pas les erreurs, mais je dirais donc des, des rectifications à faire par la suite. Euh, tout d'abord, j'aimerais bien que l'équipe euh, 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 prépare, je ne sais pas si c'est prévu dans l'agenda, donc une petite présentation lors de la réunion I4 annuelle. Comme ça, tout le monde, les responsables, tout le monde est présent. Donc euh, ici, nous sommes que l'équipe qui travaille sur la plateforme, mais je préfère que euh, qu ce soit une présentation un peu simplifié au, à tous les participants à la réunion euh, annuelle de l'ICAT prévue en novembre. Comme ça, euh, ils seront sensibilisés sur l'importance de cette plateforme et euh, ce qui est attendu des, des, des pays. Euh, deuxièmement, donc, euh, je ne sais pas si, si on peut... Euh, euh, puisque vous allez, donc le, le sandbox, il sera ouvert jusqu'au décembre. C'est une bonne chose, donc euh, ça va nous permettre donc, de faire des tests, etc. Et bien sûr, revenir vers l'équipe si nécessaire. Donc, euh, merci et 
je vous souhaite euh, une bonne continuation. Merci. Thank you for your comments, Morocco. I indeed will make a presentation at the annual meeting um, to the commission about the status of IOMS and the work of the online reporting technology working group. So um, I'm happy to say that we can accommodate your request to update the commission on the matters we've been discussing today in a more general manner. And also I thank you for acknowledging the the benefits of the sandbox being open until December. With that, I'm seeing no further requests for the floor. I'd like to once again extend my thanks to the Secretariat and our translators and adjourn the meeting. Um, I look forward to seeing you all for the annual meeting and continuing our work for IOMS. Thank you. And Carlos, please go ahead and yeah. bring yes. us out. This is also uh, a new, a new, uh thing that we have been agreed at the Secretariat. Uh, during the annual meeting in, in uh, Egypt, we are going also to have uh, some training sessions, some to give some support to the users. To, uh, uh, so we will be uh, myself, Carlos Mayor, uh, for now, Dash, uh, Manuel and Jose will uh, have some special trainings to give support if anyone has, has doubts. So we are going to be there to help you and guide you on there, the special cases that each one, each CPC may have. So during the, all the, the, the since the, com, the compliance uh, meeting uh, on uh, 11th uh, of November until the end. So we'll be also a uh, way to support some secretary that to help the CPCs to solve some special issues. Thank you. Thank you, Carlos. Oh, sir. Yeah. All right, everyone, I wish you have a great rest of your day and um, we will see you in about a month. Take care. Okay, thank you. Bye. Bye. Merci, merci beaucoup. Et à merci. Plus. We have touched the 65 participants. Gracias, adios. This just was the, the best one, best of yeah, the training good, sessions. A good turnout. Thank you for all your hard Thank work. You. Thanks a lot. So we'll be in touch, Brian. Yes, we'll see you later. Okay. Bye, Manuel. Thank you. Jose, Dashiell, Carlos, Mayor. I'll see yeah. you next time. Dashiell, sorry, sorry. Uh, Oh, it was a bit my fault also. Uh, Michelle was going to present the first part of the current status on um, point two, but on uh, point three, point three. Then I, I overpassed it and, and uh, just pick up both. So, Michelle, you will take care of the form of viewer next time. <laughs> just, so, prepare it. Yes. Okay. See you, Brian. Thanks for everything. Be in touch. Yes. Thank you. Bye bye now. Bye. Hablamos después, ahora un poquito fuera. Okay. Por el Teams.